Okay, one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is the practical application of everything that we've learned up to this point. Now, a lot of it deals with, uh, or sorry, what we've done with so far is a lot of the basic foundations of calling, your basic understanding what the definition does, understanding what the movement does, the mechanics of the movement, understanding different sequences, and then eventually working up to modules and knowing what a module does from start to finish. So if it starts as facing couples, it ends with couples back to back with the right hand free, whatever your module is intended. And we know that a module is anything, any movement or any combinations of movements that's done to achieve a specific purpose. So if you just look at this slide as an example, we've got our caller standing there calling his dance. And the first module on his side, you know, there's three of them. There's you know, little get-ins. There's a little nodule in front of the first get-in. That's a warm-up because you should start every dance or every tip with just a simple little warm-up to allow the dancers to get used to your voice, your style of calling, especially if you haven't been there. And each of the little balls is connected. And you notice that you can go there and you can go any which way you want. So if we just assume that the little gray balls are, are prepared modules, the rest of them are get out modules or little sequences or things that you know. And the little green ball is say you wanted to try a little bit of isolated sight. As you can see, you can go down that with just a few little connections and make an amazing amount of sequences, an amazing amount of coordinated dancing, an amazing amount of variety just for your dancers without ever having to repeat yourself. The beauty of this type of system and the same thing with the uh, Mike's activator system, the same thing with the, um, uh, ah, can't, the, the rubber banding systems or crams, there's little techniques that get you to points that you know. And if you look at this just in a very simple format, if we're just using corner box or partner line modules, every module when you finish it is at what I call a fixed point. A fixed point is a corner box or a partner line or wherever you can call an Alaman left or a circle left. Essentially, ev at every node, your square is resolved, so you're never too far away from a resolution. So what this session is about is combining what we presented in all the exercise we've been doing for the last 10 months of caller training. And although the caller schools are generally focused on the theoretical information and what you look at it, you're fed with a fire hose. You're given all this information so very, very quickly that you got to take home. You're given handouts. You got to take home. You got to digest it. What we've been doing in the last 10 months is taking each one of those parts or bits and pieces, and we've been tearing it apart. And we've had the opportunity of spending an hour in a presentation, giving a theory of one part. And then in one case, up to 11 hours of discussing that one part, but they're usually about two or three hours of discussion afterwards which is something that isn't available at caller schools. It's available through your mentors. It's available one-on-one. -on -one. We have a unique opportunity to advance calling and really understanding the minutia of all the things and the fundamentals that go into it. So some of the things that the caller school do not give you are preparation and practice. They cannot give you self-confidence. They cannot give you trust in yourself and they can't give you the ability to accept that you actually know more than you think you know. And they cannot give you practice, 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 and more practice. They give you all the tools you need to get that stuff and find that stuff on your own. Okay? It's one of the fundamental failings of caller schools is that take it home and practice mentality. And one of the fundamental benefits is you have a wealth of resource material and a support source to get you inspired and invigorated to go out and do all those things that you need to do. And all the training modules, materials, and techniques in the world are absolutely useless unless you start small, you learn to use them effectively one at a time, and then let them build upon each other. So, what we generally say is um, this session, what we're going to be looking at is prim the primarily the application of all of those skills that we had done so far. And in all the sessions that you've heard, the general themes is foundations first. You've got to have those basic foundations first. You've got to know your definitions. You've got to know your movement mechanics. You've got to know your basic formations. You've got to know how to move dancers in and out. You've got to know what they do. 
That's not a catchphrase. It's a principle of learning how to call because without a good foundation, you've got nothing to build on. No matter what you want to try and build or how high you want to reach, you're going to always collapse if there's nothing underneath to support you. Uh, you need to be able to present yourself with a reliability, with sincerity, with dedication to your craft and your craft is calling. You need to build that relationship and it has to be built on integrity. And all of this is built on the ability to trust your foundation first knowledge and skills. The dancers want to come into a dance. They want to get on that hall. That hall is built on something solid and they want to raise the roof. In short terms, your job is to make, let them come in, raise the roof and know that you've got the skills to stop that roof from falling back on their heads and crushing them. So dancers don't come to dance in a solid building. They come to dance to a solid collar. That collar will have a reputation they can trust to give them a great experience. So simply put, if you put that in your mind, the building is not the hall. The collar is the hall. The collar is where they go to dance. They go to dance to a collar. The venue is really not that important for the aspects that we're talking about. Okay, it's important that you develop your foundation skills and you build upon them and you work with what you know. So let it become part of you and master it one step at a time. These are things like your basic form management. Start with a corner box to a partner line. Those two are your very, very basic formations. Build from there. If you're not ready to proceed and, and a caller says, yeah, but if you get to a corner line, you can do this. Or if you get to a cross the street box, you can do this. If you're not ready for that, just say, whoa, I'm working on this first. I'll get there. Okay, build one step at a time. Uh, you need to know your dancer movement mechanics. Um, there's a lot of different things that we've talked about. Get into a corner box or a partner line, the chicken plucker routine or the basic traffic pattern routine. Zero modules. Uh, a zero module is a module that takes you from one spot back to the same spot. And then you've got different types of zero modules where it takes you from one spot, but it may flip you over. You've got invert and rotate where it takes you from a corner box with the heads on the inside to the sides on the inside. You know, those kinds of things. You have to start understanding them, but you start small and you build. And then you've got get outs. You've got aspect change modules, which are uh, the two magic modules, the box to a line, which is swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. Or controversially, the line to a box, touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run. Those are foundation principle modules that every caller should have in their toolbox because they give you material to add on to any combination of modules that you might want to use or any type of version of site calling that you want to use. You should also have a basic resolution technique that you know works and start with your basic site calling with a one couple technique or isolated site with a two couple technique and we covered those. So essentially what you've got is two types of callers. You've got the caller on the left that says my code doesn't work and I don't know why. That's the caller that pulls every piece of information comes down and can string it all together, can put a good dance together, but has absolutely no idea why it's not working because, hey, this works. I copied this. I've checked this on Taminations. It doesn't work. And then you've got the second caller that's going to start small and start looking at all those little minute things that we've been doing over the last 10 months and say, my code works. I don't know why it works, but it works because I've started small. That caller can build on what they know and start to understand how the codes work and how they interact because it will never, ever, ever end. You never write a code for square dancing that stops. Square dancing, if your code for square dancing is your choreography, your choreography never stops progressing. There's always something more. There's always another question. There's always another routine or another sequence you can develop. The secret though is keep it simple and keep it successful. Okay. Today's all about a practical exercise. We're going to be using Taminations just so you can see what you're doing. And we're going to be going through short, call, um, short sequences with new callers to practice and to be critiqued on. And each caller is going to present maybe one or two sequences uh, on the moment. And, and at some point, I might interrupt and say, right, let's do a little bit of two couple site or one couple site or whatnot. Move them around, get them back to that footprint and then carry on. A little bit of isolated site. This is the simplicity of what you've got, which is why I had you prepare a few modules, because we're going to actually use the modules that you've prepared for this session. If you haven't, it's not a problem. Grab a couple of modules and we can still, still play with it. One of the things that I want to talk specifically about, and this is more for the experienced callers or the journeyman callers that are starting to help somebody, is critique. 
okay? There's peer critique and there's self critique. You notice I don't say on there there's um, coach critique or the real super genius callers. I noticed Ken Ratuzzi came in into the crowd here a minute. Ken has probably forgotten more about calling than I will ever know in my life. But Ken is a master. That. I'm sorry. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Uh, I, I went to one of his caller schools and I came back so refreshed. It was just amazing because he put life back into me. And it wasn't because of any masterful presentation, which they were, of techniques, principles, and foundations. It was the methodology on how he critiqued things. And I'm going to use something which Ken will probably recognize because I stole it from his first caller school. The alcohol. No. Oh, by the way, Ken, that beer that you got drunk on was alcohol free. I just thought we, we played a practical joke on you. Okay. A note on critique. Critique is not criticism. Critique should never be negative. People will make mistakes and you have to show them their mistakes, but it should never be negative. It's so very easy to point out flaws. And the reality is everyone makes mistakes. Life is about focusing on more than just mistakes. It is always important to go back and check your work. And when you prepare for a dance, go back and double check. So if you use choreography and research into your repertoire, as we call it, check it out because everybody makes mistakes. So just have a look here. I've, I've written out the nine times tables on the chalkboard here and understand how that works. That's a series of progressions. That's a series of modules. That's a series of what. So what, what, what do you see on that board? 32. Nine times four, 32. Nine times four is 32, okay? So that's what you see, you gotta understand it. So let's go for the next one. This is why it's so important. Critique should never be negative, okay? There's the nine times tables. If those nine times tables was a caller learning to call, the only thing that was pointed out is nine times four is wrong. What's not pointed out is, you did 10 things absolutely positive, great work, fantastic. Those are things that you can build and add to and everything else. You made a small mistake here. This is an easy correct. Have a look at this. We'll come back and practice that later. You know, would you rather be one of the students that gets, well, you did that wrong? Or would you rather be one of the students that gets, wow, you got 90.9% .9 out of 100. You got 10 out of 11 things right. Well done. Just the way you approach that will make them look at that nine times four is wrong because they feel positive about everything they did right. They know they're getting that progression. That's what critique is about and that's what's so important. So if you're ever in the position to coach or mentor another caller, keep that in mind, accentuate the positive. Simple mistakes are easy to fix and they're easy to learn and easy to move on. Praise the things that are right accentuate them, highlight them, pause them, work with them, and use them to help correct the, the one little mistake that they made. Don't go the other way around. Okay, so like any calling gig, uh, preparation is the key requirement for success. So with preparation, there comes practice. And when doing practical applications, practice is very important. One of the things that is important is you know at least your five foundation modules. And we've just jotted them down here. You've got your standard zero box module. Okay. These first two, I call them the caller needs a break to look and see where the dancers are without changing who they're dancing with in order that I can figure out where the hell the dancers are if I'm a site caller. That's right. These are modules and we're talking site calling. Swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel, pass through. From any standard eight chain four, that does not change anything. It's a zero. It just moves the dancers around, keeps them moving in a nice flow that I can have a look and see who's with who on the Ferris wheel, and then I can figure out what I want to do. The second one is the standard zero line. Now, this, is, this isn't zero line, meaning 1P, 2P, or a partner line. This is just a zero. It means it doesn't do anything. Okay? And that's pass through, wheel and deal, double pass through, first couple left, next couple right. What that does, it moves the dancers around again. It gives them aspect changes on the floor, has them interact, but it keeps the couple relationship together so you can see who is dancing with who if you need to make changes to pair up couples. It's a beautiful little module and it should be part of every caller's repertoire. 
You've got your two magic modules or your magic module and your conversion module, which is corner box to partner line or a standard box to a line module because it works that way as well, which is swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. Please notice I do say boys trade. I do say girls circulate because it is written that way and it's written that way specifically because there's so much more to this module when you start adding on things like slide throughs and start throughs at the end because it does a lot of other things. But that's the basic use of it. And then you've got your other conversion module, which goes from a line to a box. Touch a quarter, all eight circulate, boys run. Or by converse, the mirror aspect, left touch a quarter, all eight circulate, girls run. Does exactly the same thing, but gives a girl's flow. And then, of course, the standard, uh, we call it the chicken plucker, but it's really a half chicken plucker. A full chicken plucker is right and left through, dive through, centers pass through, right and left through, dive through, centers pass through. That's your basic traffic pattern of square dance movement. The half chicken plucker basically changes you from a box on one side to a box on the other side, or a corner box to a right hand lady box, or a head square through box to a head star through pass through box. However you want to describe it and it works for you is fine. But just remember what that does because it's a very crucial and a very important little module. Those are the five modules that every caller should have memorized and part of their repertoire. Okay, so for this exercise, what we've said is we just want everybody, especially the new new callers, to have four to six theme modules they prepared. But really, you only needed four. You need a corner box to corner box, a partner line to partner line, and a corner box to resolve and a partner line to resolve using a theme. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at those modules. We're going to get the newer callers to get up and come up with a sequence. So I get into a corner box. It could be square through. It could be anything you want. And then we'll use your corner box module. Then we'll add another module. It could be a conversion to a partner line module ending with a circle left or however you want to do it. But we're just going to start putting them together and seeing what you're looking at, how you can build sequences. And then we'll also start looking at some of the flow issues that there are with static modules as opposed to usable modules. Once again, I say it's important to start slow and where you're comfortable. I don't recommend starting beyond the four prepared and practice modules for new callers. The rest and all the confidence that comes with using this and accepting that it works will be for you. Now, uh, a comment was made in Facebook the other day that, oh, I'm using my modules, but it got so boring. And so I've, I've written all these modules. Boring for you is not boring for the dancers. That's for the math geeks. If I have six modules, say a corner box to corner box, partner line to partner line, a partner line conversion, a corner line conversion, and two resolutions, six simple modules, and my foundation modules, if I make sequences of four in length, that's using four of those modules without ever repeating the sequence, without ever repeating the order, there's the mathematics. That's 330 four module combinations without repeating a sequence. The math is factual. The only thing that gets bored is you as the caller. And if you add variety, and by the way, that's only using a heads start. If I use side start, it doubles to 660 and it has a different feel. That's simple math. Well, it's not simple math, but that's math and it's factual. If your dancers are getting bored, chances are it's because you're bored. The dancers aren't bored. They're feeling your boredom coming through. You can have a lot of variety with some very simple things. So that's just an example. How many sequences do you get in a bracket? Each one of those sequences is fairly long. That's, you know, there's a, a get in, there's a, a module, there's a module, there's a half chicken plucker. There's some isolated site, there's a half chicken plucker to an owl. I'm reading the bottom one on the left because I don't know if you can see my cursor. But there is so much that you can do just building sequences off four modules with what you know. So this is the one that I just built for here. I've got to get into a corner box. I've got to get into a partner line. You notice I'm not using my theme, which is tag the line, in my get-ins. I just got two different get-ins. So I don't have to call heads square through or heads lead to the right. I'll use them, but it's just something to give me a little bit of reference as a new caller. I jotted down my chicken plucker just 
as a reference point because I created another chicken plucker module using the tag family, This, in this case, a half tag. I've got my theme modules, corner box to corner box. I've got a theme module, partner line to partner line. And I've got my two get out modules. That's it. Off that, I could probably call about a 40 minute dance without repeating myself. So if we look at it quickly, let's just flip over here to Taminations. Let's see how this works. Alt, alt. It's not working. Alt tab. Is Taminations up on your screen? No, it's not. How about now? I can't see it. I can see it. Okay. Yes, I can see it. Okay. So if, if you look here on the left, what I've got is I've got to get into a corner box. In this case, I used a head square through. Then I used as one of the corner box modules. Swing through, boys run, tag the line, face right, Ferris wheel, centers pass through. That took me back to a corner box. I did a half a chicken plucker. Right, left, through, veer, left, half tag, face left, trade by. That's my half chicken plucker module. Then I did some isolated site. In this case, this is extemporaneous isolate. I'm keeping two couples together, but I'm actually going to be moving them around the square, but keeping their relationship together. You can do that with two, with one couple site, the snapshot working on the spot, or the two couple site where you're keeping that rubber banding technique that we've talked about in a few of the sessions. So that was just what I did there. Pass the ocean, spin the top, boys run, tag the line, face left, couple circulate, wheel and deal. You notice there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of direction changes in here. And then I said, oh, what am I going to do here? That's long enough for a sequence. I'm just going to do that. I know I've done a half chicken plucker. I'm just going to do another half chicken plucker and get them home. Square through three trade by. And what the whole thing looks like is my get into a corner box. My module, swing through, boys run, tag the line, face left, Ferris wheel. There's the tag the line, face left, Ferris wheel. Oh, that's a bit of a direct change. Half chicken plucker, something the dancers are good with. Wait a minute, veer left, half tag, face left. I've got a lot of half tag, face left, tag the line, face left. I've got a theme not only in the movement, but the direction I'm moving. Some isolated sight. Notice this four, number four couple, number three and number one dancer, ma uh, ma uh, three man and one lady are all together. Great, boom, because I'm on, that was my snapshot. I've kept them four together. And then I did a half chicken plucker resolve to the right and left grand, and I'm somewhere near home. So that's just a module sequence that dancers can get into. This is this next sequence was done with a new caller. And this is what usually happens. And this is one of the things to be very, very aware of. Come on, there we go. When you're doing this, I've got to get into a corner box. And instead of saying head square through or using one of my offers that I had heads slide through left square through it does exactly the same thing. The right hand is free. I'm ready to go, but it just feels that little bit different. And then I took a snapshot, keeping the two couples together again, using the rubber banding technique. I moved them around a little bit, but I kept those two couples together. Then I did a conversion from a corner box to a partner line. This is a pre-scripted module. It's all prepared and practiced. Then I did a partner line to a partner line module. This is all prepared and practiced. I know that they work. And then I tried some isolated site. And I started going and I went, uh-oh, I'm in a bit of trouble here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. I know I've got to stop moving them around. I'm going to get them back to that footprint. Well, there they are, good. That worried me a bit. I need to stress things. So I'm just going to call a get out and away we go. And I use one of my get outs that I know works square the set. And I might even do an opener after that if I needed to. And what that looks like is this. There's the square through or, or the slide through left square through. Now my isolated site, this is working really good. Great. Notice couple number four and the head man and the head lady are together. They're still together in a group of four. They face in, box and that, slide through, and I've done a corner box flip-flop. I do a conversion to a partner line. 
swing through, girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. That's a standard basic foundation module that's in my head. I do a partner line module that I've written. Scoot back twice. And this time I have the girl run just because it feels different. Pass through, tag the line, face in. I'm back and I'm back in that partner line. Now I tried to do isolated sight from the partner line and I got myself in a bit of trouble. I'm still keeping the same four together, but I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with this. And I thought, oh my goodness, I got myself in a bit of trouble here. I'm getting it out. There's my partner line. Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Here's my partner line resolve, tag the line, face in, touch a quarter, boys run, pass through, Alaman left, right and left grand. Here I could use a promenade home or something. I use a right and left grand. If I resolve to home, I would still do a promenade or right and left grand because I need to take a breath and gather my thoughts. For the dancers, the dancers are going, wow, we never expected that from you. That's from one of the new callers, by the way, that whole set of sequences using those modules. They got in a little trouble with the isolated site and they were in a panic, said, keep on going. They're still together. They're still together. They're on the other side, just sort them out. And they did, and it worked really, really well. So that in itself is the, the presentation. That's just a recap of what we've done in the last 10 months of presentations and how we're going to start putting it all together. Um, when I sent the invitations out, I gave a list of homework. Well, not really homework, but if anybody wanted to participate, you had some modules and that's what we were going to do is just have a look at putting your modules together and then do some positive uh, critique and some constructive criticism on how your modules work and what flows. So before we start, has anybody got any questions, comments, queries, points to add? Um, I didn't spot the uh, questions or things. I only discovered about it this afternoon when we had a meeting. That, that's I fine. Like I said, it's not, it's, it's not a big issue. You can actually do this with only your five foundation modules. If the principle is exactly the same. And if you know your five foundation modules, you can actually call a pretty innovative dance with just those modules. Add those into a singing call anywhere and you're, you're really doing well. And that was one of our first sessions. Uh, Anybody have any questions? Actually, I had the same thing as Carol. I didn't know about the homework until this morning and I had a repair person this afternoon. So I didn't- Not, get not a big problem, <laughs> like I said. All we're looking at is just the techniques so that you can take these and you can practice these when you start theming or, or preparing for a tip. If, if I was going to prepare for a tip and I was using my modules, I would prepare two singing calls I would prepare modules that have my theme movement in focus and my lot. And then I would sit and I would put that record on, probably go through it about 20 times, mixing and matching what pattern call I'm going to use and mixing and matching the modules. I'm not memorizing the modules. I'm not memorizing any sequences. I'm learning how to mix and match them together in short routines to an Alaman left or a right and left grand or a promenade home so that when it comes time to actually start doing it, I can refresh at a glance. Yeah, those are my modules. They're in my head. They're practiced and I can perform. Well, Mel, I did do the homework and I did get something written up, but I'm a static guy. So I'm not sure. So I'm not sure how well it's going to go out in the dynamic form. So we'll, well see what happens. You, would you care to be our first volunteer then, John? Sure. Why not? Beautiful. Well done. Okay. So let me pull contaminations up. Have you got your sheet handy? At that sheet that I made up. Okay. I'm not sure how well this is going to go, but we'll give it a whirl. Okay, so let's just quick reset that. So the idea is there's your square of dancers. They're pretty qualified dancers. They know what to do. I will ask if you do have something like flutter wheel and sweep a quarter, tell it to me as one movement because that's the way it goes into the machine. It just saves typing because I got to type this as we go. So give me a, your uh, a get in to just start how you would start a normal square. You've done the circle left, right, 
Alaman left, right and left grand warm up. Now you're going to start into your patter calling with your first figure. So get me into either a corner box or a partner one. All right, just, just to start out with, uh, I did make a theme to all my stuff. So it, it includes the Ferris wheel. So we'll okay. see how that works out. All right, so I have a head ladies chain, heads promenade half, heads lead right. The veer left, Ferris wheel. Center, centers pass through, right and left through. Okay, you're in a corner box. Um, see this couple number four on the outside? Yes. And number one man number three? Give me just a little bit of isolated sight. Just keep those four dancers together on that same spot. Just move the dancers around. Oh, pass through. Yep. Bend the line. Now you can't do a bend the line from there. Oh, I can't. No, pass through. Um, oh, let's see. Pass through, face in. Yep. Uh, well, let's see. Pass through, face in. Touch a quarter. I don't know. I'm working this. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Touch a quarter. Um, circulate twice. No, you're going to split, split, circu split, split circulate. Yeah. Split circulate twice. And let's see, the girls, girls turn back. Typing's a little slow. Just give me one second here, John. I just need to. Well, they're back when you started. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's perfect. Okay, now give me. You, you've had them moving. Give me your. Uh, I know you're in a corner box. What do you want to do? A corner box module, or do you want to do a get out? I'll do my quarter box module. Okay, which uh, is swing, swing through boys trade. Boys run. Yep. Ferris wheel. Dose it a wave. Oh, that's not working. That's not you, that's my typing. Hey, what's next? Next? Extend. Yeah. Boys run. I get a wheel and deal right and left through. Okay. You're back in the corner box. What do you want to do from here? Well, let's do a get out. Okay. Let's do a square through three. Um, trade by. Yep. Veer left. Ferris wheel. I want to zoom. Any choice. Centers right and left through. Centers pass through. Alaman left. Promenade home. There you go. That's what I wrote. Okay. You guys, so let's tell, you guys could tell me what you thought. Let's have a quick look at this. Now, as you can tell, I was you don't have to tell me what your theme movement is beforehand because if your theming is good with your modules, we should all be able to pick up what your theme is. But uh, okay, yeah. It's entirely up to you. Um, what you've got is a sequence. You've got to get into a corner box. Then you did some isolated sight. 
Did you notice that when you're doing the isolated site, and John is a brand new caller, so I, I don't believe you've actually called in front of a live audience yet, have you, John? Not successfully. I mean, well, yeah, I have, but not, not, not very often. Okay. So that practice, and you notice the hesitation in the voice with the isolated site. That's something that comes with practice because you've got to think, you've got to think a lot harder. And then when the modules comes, it was bang, 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 bang. That's from practice and repetition. So let's see what the flow looks like. So we've got head ladies chain, head ladies prom or heads promenade. That would flow beautifully off the chain and lead to the right veer to the left flows well. Ferris wheel also flows well. And the centers pass through and a right and left through flows well. So nice little module. When you're doing the right and left through and you've got those kinds of things, remember if you end the movement, if you end the module with a right and left through, the man's hand is behind the lady's back. So you've got to be very aware of what comes the next movement. If it's a right hand movement, like a star through or something, in facing lines, not so bad, but in boxes, it tends to be a little tight. It can get awkward. So allow for that. Use things like a, a wheel around or, or you know, partner trade to be an equivalent for that if necessary. In this case, he's following with a pastor, which is a perfect selection. So he's starting his isolated site. He goes pass through, face in, touch a quarter, split, circulate twice. Girls turn back, which actually flows quite well because they were moving forward, not spinning around. And he's back in the corner box. Excellent little isolated site module. And, or sorry, excellent isolated site. And that's also a good little module now. And what he did was the one couple snapshot. He put them in that position, took number four coupler, whichever ones he chose and only moved those two couples in their own box. He didn't take them anywhere. He just moved them back onto the exact same footprint. Then he went back to his next corner box to corner box module. Swing through with a boy's trade, boy's run, Ferris wheel. Now he could have done a center's pass through, but he did a center's docile o to a wave, extend, and a boy's run, Ferris wheel, I missed, missed that one, but um, you notice what he did when he, he did that, the boys run Ferris wheel. He's changed the aspect from the flow coming into the Ferris wheel. So it's a left-hand flow. It's essentially the same thing, but it takes them in a different direction. It's not difficult. The dancers are able to do it, but it feels different for them. Then he did the uh, uh, square through three trade by veer left, which is where we're at right now. And a Ferris wheel, now he's going the way that the dancers are used to. A zoom, centers right and left through and pass through. He could have easily done a square through three, his choice. Alaman left and a get out promenade home. So let's open the floor for comments. Um, any comments, questions, queries, points? This is what critique is about. The one thing that I noticed is when he did the boys run, he had them running into the center. Yep. I try to always do a run to the outside. It's easier. It is. And had he called a bend the line, I would have gone, oh, the nice thing about the way he did that, boys run, he followed that with a forward flowing motion. And that would be, that's actually not a bad choice. Uh, it, it's a personal choice for callers, but you're absolutely right. There, there's an old adage that says, never run in and bend in. If you're going to run in, you bend out or cast off or something like that. But on a Ferris wheel, you can do a, a run. You've got the same flow as you would have as a couple circulate, which a run in and a forward action is not so bad. It's not something that you would do over and over and over again. But to get that aspect change on his highlight and do a Ferris wheel from there, I think it was personally a good choice. But it is something definitely to be aware of. So the uh, the trade by veer left combination could be improved. Trade by veer left is sometimes an awkward combination. Um, I I honestly don't know why. Because logically, logically, it is a perfect flow. A courtesy turn has the same flow for the girls in the veer left, except they've got hand contact. The only reason that that doesn't flow is because you don't have hand contact 
on the partner trade. It's a forward action for the centers and a veer to the left, which if timed well, really works well. The, awkward, think... the awkwardness of a trade buy, if I did a right and left through, or sorry, if I did outsides courtesy turn, centers pass through everybody, veer left, that flows perfectly. If I do a, from a static centers pass through veer left, that flows perfectly. But if I do a trade buy with that outside couple doing a partner trade with no hands, it suddenly becomes awkward because we seem to rush into that and the shortness is on the timing. Um, it, what you're saying is true. A lot of dancers, especially lady dancers, will feel that that is a bit awkward. And that is because we don't use them. And that's because our styling is not taking into account for a flow. We got to get there first instead of dancing partner trade. From a caller's perspective, that is something to be absolutely aware of because things, the way people dance and where they dance changes from every club. And if your dancers are not comfortable doing a trade buy, then change that to something that they would be more comfortable with. Hey, Mel, uh, if, Mel, if you know, if, when he, when somebody mentions something, you ought to go by and play that over so we can all see what he's talking about and he can point out what the problem is. Good suggestion. It's down towards, it's down a little bit further. Okay, so we do a right and left through, we did a square through three, trade by followed by a veer left. I think Word. I think part of it is is that nobody's connected. That's right. And that's that's where the difficult in in body flow and kinesthetics there is absolutely nothing wrong with that movement. Where, where it becomes a problem is nobody has hand contact and because you don't have hand contact other than the reach out and touch someone on the partner trade we're so used to not completing a movement with hand contact. You touch hands, you trade, you touch hands, and then you go to the next contact. Because of body flow, we've adapted our dancing that we'll do the partner trade and move forward into the next call. That's a programmed response, and that's what makes it uncomfortable. Um, it's not something that I would personally use an awful lot of. Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with it, but depending on how your dancers are trained, uh, I know, um, I'm just speaking from my own experience, when I learned to dance in Europe, your trade was a trade, a touch. Everything was touch hands, do the movement, touch hands. You, you knew where you were all the time. Double pass through, you touch hands before you do the clover leaf. All of those other kinds of things. That was just, that was a nuance of dancing because that was put in, in the styling. When I went back to Canada, that changed from club to club. When I went to the States, it was not that common because the dancing flow was there, it flows one and that aspect was lost. So if you're aware of it, your dancers are aware of it, you can compensate for it. Is I, think, so. I, I want to go this. back. I want to go back for just a second to the boys running into the middle. Yeah. That's not usual, which makes it harder, but I think it's a great idea because you have good body flow afterwards to help the dancers get more used to such a thing. Yeah, that's that's the swing through. Boys trade. Oh, sorry, that's not that one. That's Where not it. It's um, down further, no? Down, down right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you did a do side do to an ocean wave. Extend. And by the way, I'd like to compliment that in particular. Uh, rather, you could have done a pass through step to a wave and boys run. You did a do side do to an ocean wave. You established the ocean wave beforehand and then extended to an ocean wave, the dancers are expecting an ocean wave movement instead of just touch and run. So that's a good choice, actually giving them there. You can do it either way, but giving it there beforehand is ensuring a success, okay? And then from, I was gonna just back that up. From here, as Betsy was saying, the boys are running in. If you do a run and a bend, that is horrible. But the flow for a Ferris wheel is forward, and it does have, as, as Betsy said, very nice flow. Boys run forward. It was a wheel and deal, which is a tight action. I would use the Ferris wheel pass through, but there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's got a good flow. Sorry, I thought that was a Ferris wheel when I, was, I made the initial comment. Mel? Sorry, is that, was that what you were going at, Betsy? Yeah. I mean, Phil said the, the 
he always does the boys running to the outside because it's easier. But the, the, if, he, if we all do the boys run from center to end only, the boys will never get comfortable doing a boys run coming into the center. And if, if we don't like the restrictions that our dancers have because of what we call, then we have to change what we call. That's correct. And what I also liked about that, that, instead of doing the standard swing through boys run Ferris wheel, we're changing the direction of flow for the dancers. Hey, Mel. Yes, Ken. Uh, this, uh, you know, obviously with newer callers and modules, we see this all the time. Um, I'll just give you my two cents. And I know it doesn't dance terrible. I'll be the first to admit it. It's not. It's not the most god awful, you know, example of bad flow. But anytime, and, and newer callers tend to like to call this. Well, I've seen experienced callers too, and I think I think Mike Sikorsky and I sort of agree with this as well. Anytime you have body flow going straight ahead, like you had on that trade by with the centers, um, this is just my opinion, but this is the way I teach it. I don't particularly care for a veer left without some sort of flow before it. Now, maybe for the outside people, there was some flow, but to me, just pass through veer left. And I see that a lot with new callers when you're working uh, formations with them and you say, get me into some sort of two-face line. The, the instinct is, and they're not, I mean, they're, they're new, so they're not wrong. It's just that they want to say, well, let's just veer left and there's an instant two-face line. I get it. But to yep. me, I like to teach things like if you have facing couples and you want a two-face line, I think a right and left through veer left is much smoother, especially for the ladies. And again, um, I mean, that's just the way I feel. I know that we can quickly veer left and get into a two-face line. But to me, um, you know, if you really want to fine tune your skills, you should put some body flow in front of it. That's just my opinion. I completely I agree. agree. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. I completely agree with everything he just said. Nope. Here, I'll and mute myself now. No, no, you don't have to. I, I agree, agree with you 100% on that. Um, where, where you get a lot of issues is stop dancing. Timing and delivery has a lot to do with the success of your calling. If you do a Ferris wheel, centers pass through your left. Ooh, yeah, if you time that well, the dancers will do it. You can get away with it. It's not something that you should try and get away with. It's something that you should be aware of, which brings up a point um, which I would like to just address. If I look at, uh, let's just do this. Okay, so we've got this kind of thing. Uh, let's just do a tap, pick, and plucker here. Okay, so square through three trade by, not a big problem. Now, if, if, if we look at moving with the movement, the movement right and left through is one of those key pivotal movements. So if we do a right and left through, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel. Um, zoom. Then a square through three. Okay, so we've got something there. Now, see that right and left through where that is. The nice thing about a right and left through is you can move it around in a lot of formations, especially if you've got a zero module. So if we look at a, a facing couple module, if I do um, flutter wheel, oh, sorry, yeah, I can do a flutter wheel. Uh, don't worry about the flow here. Cannot type today. Okay.
see that right and left through there. That right and left through can be moved pretty much anywhere in that sequence to allow you to achieve better body flow. So if you have a right and left through center, pass through right and left through, or centers swing through boys run wheel and deal right and left through, or veer left wheel and deal right and left through, put the right and left through in front of the veer left. So if you've got, uh, what was I saying? Um, pass through partner trade. My mind's gone blank here. Okay, so if I have veer left, wheel and deal, right and left through, there's a nice little module. Pretend that's a group in the center or coming up to an outside box. Instead of having that veer left, wheel and deal, put the right and left through at the beginning. It does the same thing, but it achieves a lot better body flow. And there's a lot of little options like that. Right and left through is one of those key movements that you can actually move around a little bit in a square or in a sequence. And it doesn't make a lot of difference as long as you're keeping your couple pairings going. Excellent comment, Ken, and it's always welcome. I'm still waiting for you to come up and do some presentations there. Uh, okay, so we've looked at John's. Anybody have any other comments for John? Uh, do you mind if I make one, Mel? Absolutely. I uh, know. I mean, no, I don't mind. I, I like what John did with the end run. Uh, what what it really points out is that. When you say, oh, you shouldn't do things, that, that's what you should do is learn why you shouldn't do them. And we, if we have an end run, we always expect the centres are going to do something next. And he did that. And so whether it's a boys trade or a ferris wheel or a scoot back in the centre or whatever, uh, that's going to be good flow because he chose the run and then he did something that still included that centre person doing that move next. Certainly the wheel and deal is a bit tight, but a, a, a ferris wheel or a scoot back would have been better or a boy's trade. Yep. In, terms of, in terms of the VLF discussion, I actually like the idea of reverse wheel around and VLF rather than a right and left through. But that's just me and using some of the other calls. But for a newer call, I, I agree with them. Um, although the boy's backing up for that right and left through, it's been danced so much that it's assumed that that's the best option. And certainly I agree with it. It is the best option when, as opposed to moving straight ahead. So wherever the dancers are moving directly ahead, the veer isn't a good option. I got two comments. Alan, I totally agree with you on the reverse wheel around and wheel arounds. The problem I agree, and I, I love wheel arounds and reverse wheel arounds. The issue is uh, I don't see a lot of callers using them, so dancers don't get a lot of, at least I can speak in our area, dancers don't get a lot of practice, and I would encourage all the callers here to use more wheel arounds and reverse wheel arounds. They're going to make stronger dancers, and I just want to comment. I thought John did a really nice job with his module. So do I. I, th I think what you're, saying, what you're saying on wheel around falls very well into what Betsy was saying. The problem is not with the dancers because I've heard this comment a lot. Oh, our dancers can't dance that. Well, our dancers can and we're only dancing basic. That problem is not with the dancers. That problem is with the callers not using the material that's available to them. Once right and left through is taught, they forget about movements like wheel around. I and, agree. You know, it's, it's something that we as, as a collective group have to fix. Very well done, John. Yes. Well, then, well, I'm glad I got it, but I agree with Betsy and uh, the rest of you guys. That the callers themselves are creating the problems by not expanding their uh, repertoire and using all the calls available. If we don't do that, we're going to work into the situation where they aren't used to doing some of these things. I'm not, I'm not particularly doing any calls on purpose. I'm just making the, doc, the dots go around and uh, get to where I want. So. I'm not sure uh, what I luck into a lot more stuff than you guys give me credit for, or I get credit for more stuff that I've lucked into. But I agree that if we don't keep using all the calls available, we're not going to have all the calls available to use. 
You're giving away a trade secret there, John. I know. What Colin, can I say? Colin is just, just moving the dots around and getting them back where they started. I know. I'm just a newbie <laughs> in this game. All right. Thanks for the critique, guys. Well done. Um, who would like to go next? Yolanda, you get your hand up. You're going to have to unmute yourself. I can't do it on the fly like John does, but I sort of was playing with Taminations 10 days ago or so. And okay. if I can get some critique on this one. So it's um, head square through four. There's a... And that will be any get in equivalent. Yeah. Um, box nat slide through. Yep. Partner trade. Ladies chain. I don't like and the then, And then I put. Uh, wait, wait till the end. Okay. And then I put forward and back as optional. Um, past the ocean. I'm just going to leave that out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, recycle. Veer left. Uh, Ferris wheel. Now, is this a new module or is this all part of the same module? Uh, I don't know. I just sort of I guess all the same module. <laughs> this, okay. Like I said, I was goofing off with Tammy. No, no, that's all right. Keep going. Um, double pass through. Uh, partner trade. Everybody. Um. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what I did it ten days ago. Um, uh, centers pass through. An alum and left weave. Fill your home. Which is the get out. I don't know why it doesn't like weave the ring. <laughs> okay. So then the right and left through would be fine. Left, right, and left ground would be fine. <laughs> okay. So what you've got in there is you've got any get in to a corner box. Yeah. Which is perfectly fine. You used head square through, and there's nothing wrong with using head square through. Um, the idea, there's nothing wrong with using heads lead to the right circle to align, which reminds me, Mike, I think you made a comment in the chat. I'll get to you on that one in just a second. I want to talk about the flow at that one particular spot of your sequence because the rest of it is really good. Yeah. Um, then what you've done is you've done, as John said, just move the dots around till you get them back. Yes. <laughs> now, moving the dots around, you notice I put in brackets here, corner box, corner box, corner box. I was, I was trying to do corner box zeros. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what you've done. Box and that slide through partner trade ladies chain. Well, let's just look at it. We've done our square through. There's our corner box. So box the mat, slide through. Oh, we're facing out, partner trade. Nice choppy movements, ladies chain. That one, a few people went, huh? Pass the ocean, recycle. Corner box. That's a good corner box module. So corner box to corner box. And it's a zero and it's a two couple module. So you can do that if you're calling a two couple dance you can do that if you're calling a four couple dance. Your next module, you've done a recycle, which is a forward flowing movement. You followed it with a veer left. That flows quite well. Ferris wheel, good interaction, double pass through. Okay, you've got them there. You've got them back on the outside. You could, their centers pass through and right and left ground promenade home. No, can you, run that what, first, can you run that first module again? I want to point out what uh, the flow issue I was talking about. It was a square through four, which I yeah. think is 
find that box and at right here is unusual, but they'll do it. Go ahead, yep. box and at, and slide through to facing out. Uh, you may have to help with that, but that is an amazing work for slide through. Yeah. Uh, and oh, now here's the problem: when you partner trade, if, when you actually do it with people, the girl on her last step is actually stepping either sideways or slightly back. So you don't want to make the next call lead her in like a flutter wheel. Or ladies chain. So what you, or ladies chain. So what it, it was a ladies chain. So what you want to replace that with right here, because the rest of the sequence was great. You follow with a pass through, I think wheel and deal after that, uh, whatever it was, replace that ladies chain with the right and left through in a flutter wheel. Or a reverse a flutter wheel. Yeah. Well, the reverse flutter wheel would also work, but I think, didn't she use that somewhere else? No. No. A reverse flutter wheel would do the exact same thing because the boy's flowing into the into the reverse flutter. So that's an excellent comment. Yeah. Now, there was a comment, a very hearty discussion about, well, if you do a partner trade, they're doing the same thing. The boy's going one way. Why can the boys go in and the girls can't? And the reason is it's a wide on the move. partner trade, the boy is moving around the outside. He's got more room to move with the flow. Whereas the lady, it's a two-step pivot. It's a very tight flow, which is either results as, as Mike said, a check step or a slightly back step or rock back to get into that position. Um, let's just change that to a reverse flutter wheel. And see how that works. Okay, so got the same thing. Head square through four. That takes us to a corner box. Box and that, excellent choice. And the slide through the line spacing out. I wanted to comment on that as well. Reverse flutter wheel. There's the flow, beautiful. And then into a forward motion, past the ocean recycle, veer left. The nice thing about that reverse flutter wheel is it gives a left-hand transition followed by a right hand transition. You're getting motion and movement in both directions, which is what you want to give that dancer, especially if it's a smooth flowing motion in both directions. You've got two really good little modules there now. Hey, Mel, on that past the ocean recycle, wasn't there a, didn't one of the people have to jerk themselves around a little bit on that? Past the ocean recycle? Um, past the ocean recycle is only jerky if you don't dance a recycle. If you try and dance it past the ocean, girl turn back wheel and deal, as most dancers when they get to the plus level try and do, and forced, it becomes very jerky. But the first past the ocean, the very first step on a past the ocean is to let go of hand and take a small step forward. After that, it's a beautifully flowing movement. It's a no hands movement, and it's not jerky at all recycle. when it's danced properly. I think, a I think that was I a think great you meant recycle. What did yeah. I say? I said, I thought something was wrong with Pat. Something looks weird with past the ocean recycle. Can you play that part again? Sure. Up in the, yeah. Okay, we've done the reverse flutter wheel. Now we're going for a forward action and it's a right action off the left. Recycle, followed by a veer left. And that is a beautiful uh, flowing motion. Absolutely. I saw something else. Yeah, I think, I think what it is, is you've also got to take into account contaminations or any of the programs. When they finish a movement, they tend to square you. And that's where you get that little bit of jerky. You've got to just put that out of the back of your mind. Uh, contaminations is a bit unrealistic as far as dance and flow. Very well done, Yolanda. Thank you. <laughs> Now, what I want you to do on this, is, hang on, that's it, copy, paste, dancers are not stopping. We're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, here, and just speed up the record a little bit. Your dancers are dancing extremely well. You've got a really good floor. Give me some isolated sights. Take a snapshot. 
whichever you want, number four, number two, or one and one and four. Just give me a little two couple routine to fit in there and bring them back to that same footprint. Okay. I do better when I'm having a good day. Um, uh, so, um, let's see. Right and left through. Yep. Um, well, I'm okay. Uh, pass through. Yep. Okay, we're going in for a chicken pluck. <laughs> Trade by. <laughs> You're gonna do a chicken pluck. Yeah, that's fine. Well, that's what it's turning into. Um, um, let's see. Um, let's change it up a bit. Um, centers half sachet. Mm, that would be a bit awkward. Okay. Keep keep your four together. So you've done your pass through trade by just do that again okay so pass through we could have done a die through as well right yeah we could have done anything just, just to have it. i'm pointing to the screen with my finger thinking you can see what i'm pointing at okay okay this number four couple you want them on the outside of your box okay so um right and left through The only thing is they're still swapped. Right? Yeah, they flip flop. They're flip flop. But it's still a corner box. And if we if we use your first module again, which is box the net. Uh, sorry, we wouldn't do that off a of right and left through. We use your second module. Your left. Ferris wheel. Double pass through. Uh, partner trade. Centers pass through. Corner box. And we finish it with what you had, which was Alaman left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all we've done there, your two couple site calling. And it, it's something, and, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't feel pressured into getting to it. But what we've done is we've just incorporated that. In your case, you took a chicken plucker, and then you put them back on the other side. All you did was flip flop the square. Now your routine does exactly the same thing. Fast answers. And although they were moving very fast, probably not dancing on the beat of the music, they were dancing very comfortably and with good flow. That's all it takes. Uh, John used a um, pass through face, uh, sorry, yeah, pass through face in uh, touch a quarter split circulate twice and then a boy's run to get us back. Nice, simple, isolated. You just interrupted that repetitive flow with something different that puts them back on that same footprint. In your case, you actually moved the transition across the square with a little bit of assistance, which is really, really good. That's two couple extemporaneous. It doesn't have to be insanely clever. It doesn't have to be fantastic. It doesn't have to be really, really detailed and technical. Just that little break changes the whole feel because now the flow is coming from a different direction to a different wall and it feels different for the dancers, but it's exactly the same movements. I think those are excellent little modules, Yolanda. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> um, anyone else want to give it a crack, or anybody else have any comments? Sure, I'd like to give it a shot. Who's that, Malcolm? Well, I, yeah, I've got, I've got some. I wrote some down anyway as the, as the homework anyway. So I don't know how, uh, how 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 good they are anyway. I'll give them a go. Uh, some sorry, just I'm I don't have when uh, I'm up on Taminations, my chat window isn't open. Uh, there's a couple of comments I'd like to.
point out, uh, Goog said the flow and trade by beer right is better, but you can pick the trade by beer left with proper delivery and timing. We, we've talked about that, but it is always better to have that turning flow, a wheel around the right and left beer or something that will lead into that beer left or something that's going to lead into the beer rights uh, similarly. Um, Mike, you said you agree with Ken. Do I do does not create flow for a beer left. You are so correct on that. Uh, even though when they adjust, their adjustment is slightly to the left when they're moving, it's not an expectation and it's more of an expectation of what to come next and the partner relationship has to be established and fixed at the end of the dose I do. It creates a stop which does not make for a good flow for a beer left. Um, uh, Mike says, uh, yeah, coach against pass through beer left because it breaks up that wind in the face feeling. True. And then, um, oh, you've got something in here, a partner line get in, which we'll look at as soon as we finish with uh, Malcolm. Is that okay with you, Mike? Good. Okay, Malcolm. Okay, yeah, um, I, I sort of uh, follow the idea from one of your plan. I've tried to sort of go, go away from the, the, the example ones and do some um, sort of made up routines. Yep. Um, but uh, right, starting from um, the, uh, the the square uh, into a corner box, um, heads uh, box the net. And heads slide through. Love it. Okay. Uh, then going into a, um, a, a small module, um, touch a quarter. What kind of module is it? Um, the corner box module. To a corner box? Yeah, one of the corner box module, yeah. Okay. So touch a quarter. Sensors run. That's a boy and a girl running, nice. Yep. Uh, wheel and deal. That's my f featured uh, featured move for the uh, for the for the set. Okay. Swing through. Single, single hinge. And box the net. Okay. Do you have one that takes us from a quarter box to a partner line? Um, yeah, I was going to go through a chicken, uh, chicken plucker, but okay, uh, we'll do a chicken plucker. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, eight chain six. And right and left through. Okay. That's another chicken plucker variation for those of you that are writing down equivalents. And also, he uh, could put that right and left through at the beginning as well. Then I, I thought I'd uh, put in a, um, a, a, an isolation uh, for, a four, four person isolation. Okay. So, um, uh, right, centers split through, separate round one to a line. Then um, wheel and deal. So they're facing out. Okay. Um, girls zoom. Uh, then the ends trade. And box the net. Okay, and how do you get them out to home? Then I was going to do another uh, half chicken plucker. Uh, slide through. Square through two. Uh, 
and trade by. And then finally, uh, the, uh, the, the, the get out, um, spin the top. Boys run. Wheel and deal. Pass through. Alaman left. And then the box the net and slide through. Just to get your facing back in again. Okay, nothing wrong with your pass through Alaman left. Taminations just doesn't do it. And you would come back to a home position, box the net, and slide through. Okay, I have uh, a number of issues. Okay. Um, my issues were I saw a lot of faces going, ooh, ah, mm, mm. so I'm going to open up the floor first. Let's have a look and see what we've got going here as far as flow. So let's just follow this and watch the flow first. So heads, box and that, slide through, excellent, get into a corner box. Touch a quarter, centers run, I like that. Wheel and deal, swing through, hinge, box the net. Again, your feet are being boxed the net, I think. They box the net from an ocean wave? Yeah. No good. Yeah, that's, that's a little dicey, but. Was hey, Mel, can you stop it there? Uh, I was just going to go through the sequence, then we we're going to go through it in the minutia, but yeah, All I can right. stop it in the Okay, let's, let's go back right up here to the. Um, Box the mat, slide through to a corner box. Did anybody have any problems with that? Mm, I, I, I sort of do, but. Now in your area, box the mat is not a well-liked movement. I know that. Well, I think because they're, they're all bunched together at this point in the ocean wave. And um, I, think it's, I think it's awkward. Is it the worst case scenario? No. And I understand where he's coming from. I, I guess I had more problems with the facing line wheel and deal personally. Yeah, I'm going to come to that one. <laughs> okay. Touch a quarter, centers run. Okay. Wheel, wheel and deal. Okay, any, any problems with touch a quarter, centers run, wheel and deal? I'm not so fond of touch a quarter, centers run. Because it's just be, I would I would like a center train first. <laughs> Breaks There's up then, the flow. Yeah. Yep. What what we're what what they're saying on that is, what you've got is a dancer anticipation. It's it's not a problem with the technique or the definition of the movement. The problem is with the flow of the dancers because you've also got to take into account the anticipation of what the dancer's expectation is. If you do a touch a quarter to an ocean wave, you're going forward, there's a center's contact, a center's run is suddenly, oh, I didn't expect that. Okay. So that, that dancer anticipation and their dancer expectation is what causes a lot of issues for new callers because fundamentally and by definition, it should work. There's no problem with it. But the reality is dancers are used to going right hand, left hand, forward flow, forward action, and it's smooth flowing. That's like saying Dixie style to an ocean wave, swing through. Not a problem. Dixie style to an ocean wave, left swing through. Oop. Or touch a quarter, swing through. It's contrary to what the dancer expectation is. Okay, now we've done a touch a quarter, centers run, wheel and deal, right hand flow. And we're going to go into a swing through for the, what's that number one man? So we've done a, a He's gone from this position around 180 degrees into that position he's in now. Swing through. There's another 180 degrees. There's a hinge. There's another 180 degrees. Followed by a box in that. There's another 180 degrees on the 90 degree axis. I had a little issue with that for the men because that's 180, 180, 180, and 180 in a, in a 90 degree axis. 
So that can get a little bit much for overflow. Did anyone else have any comments on that? And you should dance this as a woman. <laughs> just, just for fun. And you probably won't call it again. Okay, so. The single hinge box in that is. Hang on, I gotta see where we are. Just, okay. So, so we've done the hinge. The expectation now is for those ladies to let go of hands and the centers to do something. We don't do that. We do a box and that. And box and that from ocean waves is very common in a lot of areas. It's very uncommon in other areas. Um, Personally, from, from there, I would not have called that. Uh, I, I don't um, think about the box to net from an ocean wave. I'm talking about the box to net from an ocean wave after the single hinge. Yeah. E even that. that that's, uh, a, that's a flow issue. That's an expectation issue. This, okay. this is the same thing as the touch quarter centers run. You cannot call it soon enough for the dancers to position themselves and to get prepared for that type of move. Mm -hmm. uh, the touch a quarter is too short, the single hinge is too short. If you call a spin and exchange the gears, and, say, and then we have a single hinge and a box to that, but the dancers have enough time to position themselves, but not uh, with a single hinge, there's no, no, no time. Yeah, absolutely. Like touch a quarter swing through, same thing. Um, I really did like, you said, I'm going to do a half chicken plucker, eight chain six, right and left through. I like that. It's a good interactive module or right and left through eight chain six. Beautiful. Uh, Mike Sikorsky has, has written in, instead of a hinge box and that, call everyone trade and turn to face or the old fashioned trade and roll, which used to be in the basic program is now in the plus program. Trade and face works beautifully. Uh, where are we? Okay, eight chain six. You don't hear that very often, and it's good filler for new callers on pattern. That's a nice little combination, followed by a right and left three. Then he did some isolated sight. This is one of the big problems with isolated sight. When you look at movements, new callers look at what can I do from here, looking at what computer programs say I can do this from here, or what your checkers say I can do this from here with the definitions. Always remember your dancers are not a computer program, nor are they checkers. They will not do what you think they want to do if you call something like this. And that's a wheel and deal from facing lines. It's very, very uncomfortable. That's, that's something left for a workshop where you're workshopping wheel and deal from abstract positions and you're giving them lots of time. It's not something you would see on an open floor. So we did a split the outside two, separate around one. Now your flow, says it would be fundamentally good because your outside dancers are coming in, the center dancers would act as a pivot. It doesn't work that way because they've got no way on a wheel and deal. If you look at your definition, the left-hand dancer or left-hand couple steps forward and then they wheel with the right-hand dancer coming in. If they step forward from that facing lines, there's nowhere for them to go. It's very, very tight and it's very awkward. Well, yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, my opinion when I teach callers too is like, I understand what you're thinking. I've heard a lot of callers say this from facing lines, wheel and deal. You know, when you think about these types of calls, yes, the dancers in theory should be able to do them. So I understand where the, the callers are coming from, but I think you have to think before you start doing stuff like this is what is really going to be the success rate of the dancers on the floor, if we put dancers in a situation where they're not gonna be successful, then ultimately the caller's not gonna be successful. And if you're site calling, or even if you're doing modules and you know the outcome and your module works with facing lines, wheel and deal, but three quarters of the floor breaks down or all of them because they're just not used to doing it, then it really wasn't uh, apropos for you to call something like that. So. Yes, you know, that can work. I mean, you can call facing lines wheel and deal, but, you know, is that really the best way to do it? That's a, another thing is similar to crunched boxes, like in the middle when they try to do, like from a eight chain, you know, from a double pass through formation, 
lots of times callers will want that center box to do flutter wheels and right and left throughs. And of course you can call that and, and it could dance, but you're crunching people in, you know, you're not giving them enough space really to do the call. So there are other formations that these calls can be called from where the dancers have more space. Absolutely. And if they have more space, in my opinion, they have a better success rate and again, the idea is if they're successful, then everybody's successful. Thank you, I'll shut up. I oh, know, excellent comments. Square breathing and the, the amount of floor room is something always to consider. With the wheel and deal from facing lines, I have only seen one caller use that successfully. And they were doing a workshop on wheel and deal and they stopped, they got to the lines, said, who's the right hand couple, put your hand up. They did and it was an intentional stop break to reinforce it. Lines go up to the middle and come way back. Wheel and deal, right hand couple in first. He basically prompted them through it. And for the rest of the session, you go up to the middle and way back because he intentionally gave them room to do that movement. That kind of dancing is workshop DVD or a gimmick, which is how he used it in that particular aspect was as a gimmick, but he prepared the dancers for success. And that is one of the keys. If you're doing anything that's a little different, Prepare your dancers for success. Okay, you did a just the girls Zoom. I don't have a problem with that. Leaders trade, I don't have a problem with that. There's the box to that, your feature again. Okay, and that takes you back to a standard um, forward movement. Dancers with the right hand joined, you followed it by a slide through. You could have done another eight chain four. You could have done anything in there. No problem with it. You followed it with a slide through, square through two, right hand, left hand, trade by no hands, spin the top. Now, we're in a tidal wave. This started to get a bit crunchy, or it could have got crunchy, but you did this. This is the right way of getting out of a crunch situation. You did movements that didn't take any expansion. The boys run, had the girls slide in, and then the wheel and deal, you gave them room into the line. They really like boys run wheel and deal they're back in the line slide through to the alaman left and the rest of it flows out there's an excellent comment that was made instead of the, the hinge box than that hinge and everybody fold or hinge and fold will do exactly the same thing there's all sorts of little combinations of equivalent like mike said everybody trade and face your partner or face the one you traded with. All those kinds of things will go much more to break that dancer expectation and achieve success than hinge and box and that or hinge and swing through. One other, one other comment, since we're working with newer callers tonight, um, if the caller is newer, even when the module works and has been tested, if it's unusual, the dancers may question it. And because the caller is newer, they may feel their confidence may be undermined enough so they don't stand their ground. And therefore, there will not be dancer success just because of the dancer's lack of confidence and the caller's lack of confidence in themselves. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is that. Any more comments? Uh, Helen, you said you, you tried to do this with your dancers. Uh, you only have specific movements. I would be very intrigued to see what you've come up with because you've really limited yourself on the movements you can use. Would you yeah, like to well, do this? Yeah, I've, um, I've, I've um, taken um, a call. I've round about 40 calls. I only have about, around about 40 calls because this is uh, uh, in my basic class. So I've, um, limited myself quite a bit. What's your feature call? Let me as well look. Wheel and, be, wheel and deal. I think that's number 41 or two yeah. or something. Okay. <laughs> so start us off. How did you get in? Uh, heads lead left, veer right, wheel and deal, veer, uh, veer right, bend the line. And then I'm in a partner line. Okay, give me a partner line to a partner line module. Okay, pass through, wheel and deal. Okay. 
can't spell for some reason today. Centers via right. Centers via left. Everyone via left. Couple circulate. Wheel and deal. Swing through. Girls run. Couple circulate. Wheel and deal again. Veer right. Bend the line. We're back in partner line. Give me a, do you have a conversion to a corner box? Uh, no, I don't, because I don't have a touch a quarter. So I'd have to do the magic model with the star through first, but I could do that. I could do the magic model. Okay. Star through, swing through, girls circulate, boys run. Not boys trade, boys run. Star through, I think that would give uh, I think you're you're mixing up your modules. Am I? Yeah. But uh, from a partner can... line from a partner line to a corner box. But it was yeah. a half sachet partner line, so we should be aware of that. Oh, that's that. correct, it is too. I, you know, I never even noticed that. Oh, I didn't notice that either. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's fix that. Well, half sachet then. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't. Yeah. I can't get termination to do half sachet. I don't know how you get termination to do half sachet. Like half sachet. Oh, I must be spelling it wrong. Okay. Uh, but isn't isn't a way from getting from part lines to a corner box? Isn't that doing the magic model with a star through before and after? No, that's star through before oh. and after. That one switches from a. Corner box to a partner uh, corner line. Okay. Your your line box to line conversion is the swing through girl circulate. Your line to box is the touch a quarter circulate boy. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So I'm not. Mamel, you, you can call star through magic module swing through and, and circulate center straight, center run, bend the line, star through, and then they have it. Yeah. Oh, I must write that one down. It, it just take the, the regular metric module sequence and add a star through in front and add a star through in the, in, in, in the, in the rear. Yes. Yeah, but that's what, that's what I said and that's what I thought. That's ah, what I thought. Sorry. Okay. My, my okay. error. Um, yes, you're absolutely correct. I did, I, actually, I didn't expect you to be that far along with all those variations of what the magic module does and where it does the different sequences. So I was just using those two. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so now we've got a corner box. Yeah. Okay. And give me a corner box. Did you want to do, try some isolated site? Or are you not ready for that? Uh, no, I don't think we'll. we'll okay, uh, give, me, get, give me your corner box resolution then. Okay, uh, let's see. What did I do before? The, what was the last thing I did? A star through. A star through. Okay. Uh, right and left through. Ah, that's not good. You don't like that. Then put a dose of dough in there first. So what? Right and left through. Beer left. Wheel and deal. Alma left. Uh, swing and promenade short. Okay. Mel? Yes. Are you going to go through this slowly so maybe we can point a few things out? Absolutely. The, what I wanted to do is go through the whole thing all at once and then go through it again slowly, but I think you're right. Probably better just to go step by step. So we'll just go through it step by step. Not okay. a problem. Hi, Helen. Nice job. <laughs> Smile, <What>? Helen. <laughs> Mel, do you mind if I... If I just put some comments, then I'm going to log off and shut up. Absolutely not. Help yourself. So go through her, go through her calls one by one. Okay. So she started, her focus is wheel and deal. She started by going into a partner line. So 
Heads lead left. Okay. Veer, veer right. That's good. Followed by a wheel and deal. All right. Followed by another veer right and a bend the line. Okay, so stop. So my opinion, again, Helen, just my opinion, it, it does flow. It really does. It's no bad flow. But it's almost overflow because you're taking them almost as a couple. Go back. Can you go back for a minute? Absolutely. Well, watch number one couple. Again, this is just my opinion. Other coaches might disagree. So you did a veer left. You did a lead left. Then veer right. Now watch the number one couple. Then what? Wheel and deal. Yeah. And then veer right. And then bend the line. So... You're sort of, in my opinion, you're, 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 it's like a big Ferris wheel. They're just going around and around. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's not bad flow, but it's almost too much flow. Yeah. Okay. You, What's the next step? Yeah. I, I just want to add, I, if you had followed that with anything like a sweep a quarter or anything with a left-hand flow, I agree 100%. Yeah. Right, okay. right now, I think it, it stops just short of being it, uh, yeah. dizzying. It's right, right. I agree, and it's Betsy. something to be aware of. Go ahead, Mel. Okay, pass through wheel and deal. Yeah, which is, which is good because now we have that contrary flow. Veer right. All right, so go go wait 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 go back before that, and you know we've got Betsy and Mike and Guido. We got some color coaches and, and other leaders on, so they might have a different opinion. I on the wheel and deal veer right. I. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. I guess maybe if you call it soon enough, you can catch it. I, to me, the number four and number two ladies flow is almost coming to the left after the wheel and deal. Go ahead. And then she said veer right. If you want to veer right, it's really a timing issue. You're going to have to call that. Right there. Look where the ladies, look at the number four and two lady, look where they're going. They're actually coming in towards the center. And then, you know, I guess I'll, I'll let the others comment as well. I wouldn't call that, but go ahead, veer right. That's a timing issue. You're going to have to say that way in advance so they don't stop and then try to veer right. Then veer what right. was the next thing? Well, if you're left, okay. Then okay. what? And then it was followed by another beer left. Yeah, and again, look at the number one and number three couple. They're standing flat-footed, so you're sort of dragging them over there. I'm not a big proponent of that. I believe in flow before any veers. But, okay, go ahead. Couple circulate. Yep. Wheel and deal. Yep. Then a swing through. Okay. Girls run. Okay, now watch this. Girls run. Couple Go circulate. Ahead. Yep. Wheel and deal. Veer right. Wheel. Go back before the wheel and deal. Wheel and deal. Go ahead. Wheel and deal. And veer right. Veer right. Yeah. I, I think. Bad. I. I. I think that's dicey. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm going to interject on there as well. If you're going to call a veer after a wheel and deal. If you let them finish the wheel and deal or you're three quarters the way, it's got the same flow as a right and left through veer left. If you're gonna call a veer right, you've got to get them to do that well ahead of time, as, as Ken was saying, before they're only just starting and you would say wheel and deal and the centers veer to the right, veer to the left. That way they know it's coming beforehand for success. This wheel and deal and the veer right is half sashayed and for some reason, a half sashayed wheel and deal beer right feels comfortable. And I think it's because the boys are used to dragging the girls. It should not <laughs> feel comfortable. No, no, I'm serious. It, it, it should not feel comfortable for all the reason that Ken says, but for some reason it does because that man is leading and because he's doing the outside loop, it's easier for him to go and he's going to drag the ladies. I don't know about the lady's position on that, but it's that same left-hand courtesy turn flow and then followed by a veer right when she's on the opposite that, that's side. That's really tough. And that's what makes the difference. That's a real hard judgment call. I, I don't have a big issue with the flow on this one, but this is an exception to the rule. 
Then you what? Bend the line? Bend the line followed by a half sachet with the boys in front. That was a correction we made as we were going. That actually flows quite nicely. Okay. Well, that, that was my main comment for Helen was, you know, just, just be aware of that kind of stuff. I don't see a lot of veer wheel and deals, veer rights and things like that, but um, that was just my two cents. Not a bad job, Helen. I mean, we're all learning. I get it. Just maybe if that's a little helpful, if not, you know, take it for what it is. I, I remember, Ken, she's not dancing with USA dancers. No, I understand that. That makes well, a difference. I, well, no, there is a difference. You're right. Um, but I don't know how often you get a lot of wheel and deal veer rights even overseas, but I could be wrong. Yeah, what is really interesting about um, Helen's modules, when, when she sends them to me, I have a look at them. Helen is limited to 40 movements, the first 40 movements on the basic program, and that's it. She uses nothing else because that's where her dancers are right now and they do their dances with that. Um, there are a lot of options available to you to break up that flow. There's still a number of options within the program that you have, but I agree with Ken for what you have, you have some really, really <clears throat> good and interesting work there. So be aware of the tightness and be aware of that timing issue that you would have on body flow, finishing a movement and calling it cold. I think Ken, you mentioned the veer left, veer right, which is common, followed by another veer left. It's a common little gimmicky sequence, but the well, outside is are thing, static yeah. for two movements. You know, you know, okay, yeah, watching, a lot of callers in the States do that. It's veer left, veer right, centers veer left, veer right. To me, that's a gimmick. If you overdo it, it gets, you know, it loses its effect. Helen, nice job. I commend you. Yes. Yeah. Very well done. And, and remember, if she's if she's working with this class, she's going to train him to do do the things she wants to do well. <laughs> oh, I agree. When I, was, when I watched this, I could have I could have skipped the veer uh, right and veer left. I could have just done a pass through. Yep. But then then you wouldn't want me to do a veer left after that. No. Yeah. No, that's, right and left through first. Yeah, but that messes up the flow. Yeah, the, that's what are I was the thinking. positions. Because you can't just put it right and left through anywhere because then you won't, you know, then you have to do something else later on to get it right. <laughs> um, well, that's true. Okay. But my, like I said earlier tonight, I said centers passing through and just veering to the left is not the best flow. So if you have to throw a couple of more calls in to get them back where you want, is the flow is better than it's worth it, in my opinion. Like I said, and I can speak for well, I mean, I, I, even any beginner callers, even overseas, sometimes the shortcut is always to veer to get to a two-faced line because it's like the quickest thing to do, but it's not always the smoothest thing to do. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't get, I'm just trying to point out little things. It's the little. I'm very, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, really, uh, to get these comments. Very, very grateful. Thank you. Nice job. Now I'll shut up. Mel, where did you put the um, the half sachet so that I can put it into my sequence? Yeah, I just want to see if this actually works or not. And that's where we put the half sachet. I'll, I'll copy and paste that into the chat for you if you want. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks. Um, all I did is after your first get in here to a partner line, yeah. you know how you're saying you can add a right and left through? Remember the magic of the right and left through? You put a right and left through at the beginning of that whole sequence. After the veer left, veer right, right and left through, veer left couple circulate. I just put one there and I canceled it there. And that put that whole flow into perspective for you. Thanks, thanks. So 
I'll just put that in the chat and oops, I was about to paste that to you directly, Mike. <laughs> okay, there's the whole sequence as it's written on there, the screen now. Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to have a go? Sure, why not? <laughs> oh. Let's let John have some revenge here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to work with uh, corner box. So head slide through. What's your focus? Uh, it's a split circulate, which, by the way, was miserable to pick. <laughs> Bill, you better use Ken's rule. <laughs> you got it, buddy. You got it. Uh, so head slide through center's partner trade. Okay, then I did a corner box to corner box. I did touch a quarter. Split circulate. Hinge. Recycle. Mm -hmm. Then I threw in a half a chicken. Right and left through. Veer left. There you go, Ken. Couple circulate. Good for you. Wheel and deal. And a right and left through. And there's that whole right and left through thing. Then for fun, I tried an invert and rotate. Okay. Uh, Did a star through, pass through, ends fold, box the nat, hang on and a right and left through. And the other half a chicken, I did a wheel around. Oh, right from here. Yep, right from there. And a trade buy. And then my theme resolve, which John already used, so I'll use my other one. Touch a quarter. Split circulate. Boys run. Pass through, wheel and deal, centers pass through, I must have missed something somewhere because I got Alaman left, that isn't right. Yes it is. Is it? Yes it is. Yes it is, okay, okay, yeah, that's right because I have you in the lines. Rotate? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Alaman left and then promenade. Okay, well, a um, number of things to be said. You've got some really nice flow in there in a couple of places. You've got some good transitions left and right. And you've got a couple of innovations in there, which I like using that, uh, the different versions, flipping it with an invert and rotate and then carrying on with your sequence is a really, really good idea. You just have to be aware that you do it so you don't catch yourself like you did at the end. Dancing, using the same modules with an invert and rotate, a corner box to an invert and rotate corner box and then using modules is not boring for the dancers. It gives a whole new feel as to who's facing what wall, as to who's actually working with who and what's interpreting. You also did your modules in the uh, right-hand lady box to flip over. That also gives it a different feeling. And you can do that and do the invert and rotate and then flip it back. You can put those anywhere in your spatial module. So you have some really good material to work there. Uh, there are a couple of uh, minor issues that would, I think, need to be corrected, but I'm going to open the floor here. Um, so uh, hey, um, do you mind? Starting with his sequence, just the first couple of calls slowly so everyone can see. 
Yep, will do. So head slide through and centers trade is to get into a corner box. So do a slide through. Okay, stop. Well, all right. Is the centers trade there. That that's just and maybe I'm nitpicking. Guido, Mike, if you got comments or anyone else. No Again, way. I always I'm not a big fan of trades and right and left throughs and uh, well flutter wheels from the center type of formation because to me it's it's a tight. Is it the worst thing in the world? No, it's not. It, can the dancers do it? Yes, of course. But I thought that. I don't know. I just think it's a tight quarters, but again, that's me. I don't know if Mike or Guido or anyone else, so Betsy dropped off. You I got any comments on that? I'm not a big proponent of that kind of, that tight knit uh, formation for those kinds of calls. If you run that again, you can watch the head men climb over the top of each other, even in Taminations. Yeah. I completely agree with Ken on this one. Yeah. Let's try to do something other than a star through California twirl. Yeah, that has become one of the big issues. Head star through Saint and California twirl is a standardized get in. The reason why that actually works, even though it is still tight and awkward and you have to do that squeeze, is because you have hand contact. Slide through trade is two non hand contact moves where you compress them in. The only way you're going to get away with that is from a static square. If I put them in that kind of a formation, and I, I did uh, as an example, um, pass through from a, a corner block, pass through centers, start through, slide through, partner trade, they're really, really tight in there. It's not going to work as comfortable because they're working two, two, two couples, facing two couples, trying to take the space where they need four couples or, or sorry, two dancers facing two dancers where they need the space for at least three dancers to do the movements. And it's the space is just not there. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Ken. Um, nice job, Phil. You must have gone to a good school. <laughs> well, several of them. <laughs> um, yes, Guido. My, my opinion is somewhat a little different. As a club caller, I have the obligation to teach my dancers and train them and put them in situations that they can survive at open dances in, or with other callers. And there is a bunch of callers out there who do not really take the time to analyze calls and dancing positions uh, so that it's always comfortable for the dancers. And when my dancers are put in a position that they have to dance it in their home club every now and then, they will succeed easier because they have the experience to even deal with something that's awkward. But it, it is a valid point. Um, it could not be one of, the, the, one of the big issues, though, Guido, is when you have calling that is in a focus. If I do a pass or wheel and deal, and then I have the centers clustered in the middle, if I've got a tight floor and I start doing things like past the ocean, spin the top in the center. I'm forcing those dancers to crunch in. I'm forcing the dancers on the outside. Yes, they can do it. There is square breathing. Yes, they can They do that. But dancers should not be forced to go through a movement. Now, this is not a problem with the dancers. This is a problem with caller training. And you are absolutely right. There's a lot of callers that use combinations which should not be used, you know, star troops swing through or star through square through swing you know these combinations right hand to right hand to right hand to right hand instead of release movements in there a lot of callers do it that is not an excuse to say i'm going to expose my dancers to tight uncomfortable bad choreography because in case they face it at an open dance i would right. rather they face it at an open dance know how to do the movement and say well that was uncomfortable that caller will soon learn much better than us teaching bad choreography or bad discomfortable or uncomfortable choreography it, it also should go together with teaching dancers how to cope with such a situation, that they have the square breathing, that they, that they uh, pay attention to what the caller is calling and inactive dancers spread apart. Um, That's to part of the give teaching room. good callers, and a lot of good callers do that. A lot of nominal callers don't. Mike, you look like you wanted to say something there. No, no, my comment was... Uh, was with Ken in the start of the slide through in the partner trade. 
back back then, and he was completely correct on that. Uh, and I just want to point out that even if you watch Taminations do it, those head men were crawling over the top of each other right on the screen to get there. It just shows the crowding issue. It demonstrated it really well. Yeah, but the sides don't do anything. That's what I was saying about you've got, you we need three dancer spaces to do the movement. You would be here, here, and here, and you've only got three spaces for four dancers. You need four spaces for four dancers. Night, Ken. Night, Ken. Yeah, good night. Thank you. Nice job, Mel. Nice job, everybody. If I can ever be of help, reach out to me. Uh, yeah, Hello. you can. There's a number of presentations that I'd love to have you give, especially that one that you gave that one day on programming your tips and getting things ready. Uh, send me an email. I'll do one for you, sure. Absolutely. Um, okay, after that, we did a touch a quarter, split circulate, hinge, and recycle. Okay, so there's the split circulate, there's the hinge, and there's the recycle. Now, I think we've already addressed that comment uh, about hinge and recycle. What's, what would the dancer's expectation after a hinge, split circulate, single hinge? Phil? Don't look at them static, look at them as if they're moving. I've, I've done a hinge. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've come off of this, re sorry. Yeah, I've done my split circulate. I do a hinge. Notice the dancers are moving forward. The center dancers are coming together into an ocean wave. What's their automatic reaction? To do something with the centers. To take hands and they know that they're either gonna go across the square or they're going to do a trade in the middle but you followed immediately with a recycle. That is, it's not wrong choreography, it's counterintuitive to the flow. It goes everything against the dancer expectation of what they want to do. Any other comments on that? Okay, then you did a half chicken plucker, which is a right and left through, veer left, couple circulate, wheel and deal, right and left through. I love the fact that a lot of the new callers are using variations of the chicken plucker. This is one that moves them on the outside of the square with a flow with a bit of wind in the face. You could have easily done that with a Ferris wheel pass through instead of wheel and deal, all sorts of different things and variations available to you. I personally like that as a half chicken plucker. And as I said, you've got a right and left through at the start and at the end, you could have put that right and left through pretty much anywhere and move them around. Or for that move, or for that matter, not even use the right and left through. Hey Mel, can I make a comment on something earlier there? Absolutely. You know, you talk about you talk about the centers coming to a, a way or doing that was a wheel of deal and expecting they're gonna either go across or do a swing through. And you said yeah. that was what what was understood should happen, but isn't that one of the things we're trying to uh, get the people out of, so they aren't really expecting that those two flows, those two moves always flow together. I mean, it's like no. the swing through boys run type thing. No. I mean, are we, what are I'm we, saying is if I do a swing through and I follow it by a left swing through, that's counterintuitive to the dancer. The expectation is to have either a forward or a right hand action. There are so many movements that you can do. The movement we're talking about is hinge, followed by a recycle or a hinge followed by a scoot back or touch a quarter followed by a, or, sorry, a hinge followed by a swing through or touch a quarter followed by a swing through. Those, to have a movement like that is not good flow because what you want is a right hand to a left hand smooth transition flow. You can achieve that flow by saying hinge, another split circulate, it's a forward release act. Hinge, centers trade, it's an intuitive action because they'll establish that left hand weight. You can do a single hinge into a center start left swing through. Is it acceptable? You've got a whole bunch of different variety there available to you, but a right hand quarter to a right hand half with the hands joined becomes a stop action because they will touch hands and chances are they're expecting that left hand. They're gonna actually put some pressure on that left hand and that's where it doesn't feel comfortable. You're right in saying by definition, it should work. The reality is you have to take the dancers into account and it does not work. It will never work. Well, 
I think I, I got, I guess I got an issue with what expectations and flow. If you're going to present it, to me, it seems like you should present it as a flow problem instead of an expectation problem. Because if we always go with, it seems like to me, and just being a new guy, if we're going to go with what they expect, then we're going to have to do what they expect. And they're always going to just expect the same thing. But don't I we see, want to just, I you, should, see, you should present it as a flow issue instead of an expectation issue. Okay. The, the term expectation, I think, is you're, you're taking it out of, uh, slightly out of context. I'm not saying expectation as meaning a repetitive series that's always used in conjunction with each other. I'm saying expectation of dancers expect a forward flowing action or they expect left-hand action. That could easily be a single hinge and center's cross run. It could be a single hinge and the center scoot back. It could be anything like that. But what they don't expect or what they don't want is a right hand to right hand discomforting movement movement that causes just that feeling of that doesn't feel right. And that's what I mean by not the same sequence repeated, but things that don't work well together. And that's just one of the combinations that does not work well together. It's like saying star through and then star through, star through, right and left through, star through, square through. It's a combination that would work, but it doesn't feel right because it's a right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand or center square through three, right and left through. Should work, but the expectation is I've got a left-hand movement coming. Is, isn't that a combination of a hinge and recycle also very tricky because the dancers are fooled into two different uh, orientations? I mean, I've used it as an example of when things never work. Yeah. And, because and John, they have yeah. to John is correct. It is a flow issue, but it's a flow issue that's created because of what is expected on the next call. And it's not a specific movement that's expected. It's a specific type of action. It's like it's the, it's the body mechanics. The body yeah. mechanics dictate going that way, not, not necessarily the call not, not being legal, but the body mechanics. Well, the the, the the recycle becomes the f the hinge becomes the first part of the recycle. Yes. So and they don't get the orientation right. Yeah. And and they will tend to short. And uh, somebody earlier said because they're very short movements, there's no time to react to them. Dancers can clip that. I've never yeah. had the problem with dancers clipping that. I have seen that done, but I do find it uncomfortable. And it's usually because they they either take that left hand and oh oh no I don't want to go that way. Is that Oh, wait a minute. That's not what I expected. Um, the body mechanics on that, this is where you get into that real gray area. When you look at pure kinesiology, the flow for that is a circular motion, which actually you would think would flow perfectly because it's in that circle loop. The, the body mechanics and physically, it should feel right. It doesn't feel right because it's not a natural dance flow, which has to have those counter actions or those breaks in the action. Um, any other comments on that? Okay, let's go to the next one, which we had, he did an invert and rotate. Coming off a right and left through, he did a star through. Anyone want to comment on that? Star through is always someone who's had the wrong hands. Star, star through is one of those awkward calls. A right and left through followed by a star through. If you're doing a right and left through properly, the hand is in the middle of the woman's back as you finish that turn, and then it comes down underneath to take her hand, and you've got to come up. That combination, right and left through, star through, comes quickly. It means the man's got to do that kind of an action with his hand. Not exactly the best flow. You can get away with a star through, right and left through, because the hand is down, but going the other way doesn't always work. It feels uncomfortable. So slide through would slide through would have been better there. Slide through would have been better there. Exactly. Okay. And you did a pass through, ends fold, box the nap, hold on, and do a right and left through. You change that to a slide through. That is a brilliant little invert and rotate module. Very well done. And it's a lot more innovative than start through, pass through, bend the line, start through. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, then you did this. I, I wasn't quite sure of how I felt about this one. Okay, so we did a, okay, box the net, 
hold on, right and left through, followed by a Wheeler maneuver. And then we followed it with a trade by. Okay. Anybody have any comments on that? I do. No? I, I think the, the right and left through and followed by the wheel around is one complete turn to the left. And in particular, uh, the outside guy, the head guy, then had to do the partner trade as part of that trade by. Um, yep. He's on his heels at the end of that call. And that's and so that, that's something you call when you have to, but yeah. I certainly wouldn't call it very often. Yeah, that's not something I would put down in a module. Correct. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so just watch, don't, don't watch the, the sign, watch the number one couple on this. So there's a right and left through, a wheel around. Did you see that? Yeah, back it's kind of, a, kind of a bounce back, yeah. And mean, now watch watch the number one lady on this. Okay, so we've done the box the net, right and left wheel around. Trade, trade, trade. Okay, that's that's a, a flow problem that you really need to look at that one. Okay, we did the trade by touch a quarter, split circulate. Boys run, pass through, wheel and deal, centers pass through. Bloody brilliant. It's a nice little module. It works really well. OK, um, Cece, you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, right. ju I just saw your message in the chat now. Yeah. So um, sorry about that. I like I said when I'm, I've got the contamination. No, no. It was while you were doing this one that that I that I posted that. So uh, has anybody got any more comments for Phil? Okay, Phil. I think you got some, you've got some really nice material in there. You got some really good things and just some minor things to correct and be aware of. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Cece, you wanted to have a crack at this? Sure, that'd be great. Um, heads past the ocean. First off, what's your feature movement? Um, past the ocean. Okay, and you're taking me to what, a corner box or a partner box? <clears throat> yes, a corner box. Okay. Yep. Center girls trade. Recycle. Well, centers recycle. Contaminations makes you say that. And then centers pass through. Yep. Okay. What do you want next? Okay. Well, you you you've got a module. Let's convert it to a partner line. Okay, um, pass the ocean, spin the top. Boys run, Ferris wheel, centers reverse flutter wheel and right and left through. You have to put centers, or you have to put the and for contamination. Yeah. Double pass through. First couple go left, next go right. Now, give me a little bit of isolated site, just two couple sites if you want. Okay. Um, Who are you going to use? Uh, um, I'll use um, couples three and four. Okay. Uh, let's see, touch a quarter. Yep. Split circulate. 
scoot back. Um, uh, I just had a brain fart. Um, split circulate again. And girls, you turn back. Or no, everybody face in. Okay, now we've got a part in line. Let's um, take it to a corner box. Okay, and pass through. Sorry. Wheel and deal, sorry. Pass through wheel and deal. Center swing through and turn through. Okay, and we're in a corner box now. What do you want to do? Pass the ocean. This is a resolve. Yes. Okay. Swing through. Spin the top. All eight circulate. Girls circulate. Half circulate and turn through. Look for the partner, right and left grand. There's one like that. Contaminations won't let you do it that way. <laughs> I couldn't get it to do anything as far as getting it to actually do that last little bit. And it's facing. The dancers would do it. The dancers would do it, especially if you cue them, look for your partner. Okay, I got a couple of concerns. My main concern was a common issue with isolated site, and we'll look at that when we get yeah. to that. Okay, what do you think was your issue with the isolated site? Uh, it, it didn't flow very well. Oh, um, I, think, I think it flowed very, very well. Oh, I don't know. I don't even remember what I called for that, so I don't know. A little problem with the flow, and I'll give you a hint. It all went one direction. I don't know. I don't even remember what I called already. Okay, so <laughs> let's look at your get in. Okay. Did a pass the ocean, center ladies trade, recycle, pass through to a corner box. The focus is past the ocean. Any comments on that? Nice. Nice. I liked it. The sides are far enough apart that that actually works quite well in the center. Okay, so that gets us to a corner box. And then we have a corner box module, which is a conversion to a partner line. Past the ocean, spin the top. That takes us out of that. So we've got lots of room. Boys run. Ferris wheel. Now, remember what was being said about dancer activity in the middle of the square? Yes. What you have flows okay, but you're coming in off this Ferris wheel, which means the centers are usually tight. Reverse flutter wheel, followed by a right and left through, and then a double pass through. Okay, first couple left, next couple right. That works, but it's a bit tight in the center for my liking. Okay. If, if I'm going to do that, you notice how they had to go in and they actually pass through the sides. That's not so bad because the flutter wheel would make the sides back up a step. But just having them do that gets just a bit on the awkward side. Anybody else have any comments on that? 
It was later in a sequence, but I agree with what you just said. Okay, and then on a partner line, we did some extemporaneous sites, some two couple sites. So we use number four and number three couple at the bottom here. Okay, did you watch that number? Watch yeah. that number four man? You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It was all one direction, yeah. I screwed them into the ground. <laughs> that is a very, very common thing with isolated site, especially if you're working two couple. It's very easy to have dancers go into the ground. It's also very easy when you're working with a full square, if you're using extemporaneous site, to watch one couple and keep them together, and you end up screwing only two of the ladies into the ground. Okay. For, for that, that's what happens mainly with male callers. For female callers, it's usually the other way around. You end up corkscrewing two of the boys into the ground. Okay, so. And for the girls, it's very awkward. Then we did a pass through wheel and deal centers swing through and turn through. I really like this. What is the expectation after that turn through? A left out of man, but right. they don't get it. No, that's fine. As long as you, <laughs> as long as they know they're not going to get that, you set them up for a win. So your pass goes and turn through instead of saying turn through and building up for an hour left, turn through to the outside pair or something along that line that's going to cue them or even a turn through to a do side door, turn through past the ocean, cued early enough that they're not going to anticipate that. Yeah. What's, what's really nice about using partner line and corner box modules, let's say the dancers had a little bit of problem after that turn through, you can call the Alaman left. If they got into that face in after the split circulates and they were having a little bit of problem, you can call that Alaman left. If they're in the partner line, you can call that Alaman left or that circle left. You are at a get out at the end of every single module in a basic system like this. So if you do find yourself in a little trouble or you do find the dancer struggling with a particular movement, finish that end of the module and you're done. I really like that your modules themselves are fairly short. A module should never be more than 10, 12 movements max. And that is only for a feature focused movement that you got something big planned. But anywhere about six to eight movements is the maximum you should be shooting your modules for with a feature movement. And then the rest of it, swing through, Spin the top. A forward flow circulate, which is good. Girls circulate again, and then a half circulate. Okay. That, that to me feels chunky. You could say on that, you could say everybody circulate once and a half, but the girls go twice. Now what's going to happen is you're going to go to once and a half, the girls are going to take that extra step and you're going to end up in the same spot. It's not technically correct, but they would do it. It's just okay. it's that little bit of a gimmicky out rather than all eight circulate, girls circulate, everybody half circulate, unless you're working circulate and your focus is past the ocean. That's what you right. were really figuring is I, I did well on past the ocean. That was my, not on, was that circulate half? Because they're going to be wondering about that. Okay. Do you really need that half circulate or can you go right to the turn through? That's the part I wanted to comment on also. Hang on. Uh, if, that, that, we get it before the turn through, man. Before that, before that half circulate and turn through. Is yep. that where they were? Yeah. Because when you do that, when you do the half circulate and you turn through to a right and left grand, that's two right hands in a row. Yep. And and and, and okay. uh, it's discomfort, a little bit of discomfort. It's one of those little things that just chases people home early because they got a little tired. Yep. You from here, it's um, from here. It's the boy around the promenade home. Well, you could, but I think it flows better with a little more wind in the face if you call scoot back right and left grand. Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Okay. Or and if you if you like I said we've used boxing that a couple of times boxing that to a right and left grand. I like the scoot back. It, it's a release movement. It gets you into that. But a scoot back again is a you know, like turn through. Uh, sorry, if you do a half circulate turn through to a right and left grand, you're doing a scoot back.
to a right and left brand. What's the difference? The difference is the dancer anticipation. A turn through, the dancer expectation is the left hand is free. Even though the, the physical mechanics of circulate half, turn through, right and left grand, is gonna be exactly the same because that girl has to make that, the rest of that um, round to get to the partner. Physically, it's physically exactly the same. But a scoot back has a right hand in expectation from this formation, right hand in expectation coming back to a right hand, it's accepted because it's been taught and it's been trained that way. And that, that's probably a much, much better expectation or explanation of dancer expectation. Turn through says, I'm coming to a left hand free or I'm coming to a no hands movement. Yeah. Scoot back says, I'm leaving a right hand, I'm coming back to a right hand. What if she would have said, what if she would have said left turn through? Uh, they're in a right hand ocean wave, a left turn through, the only, only people that could do that would be the girls in the center. Oh, I, I mean, after the half circle, we're talking about the turn through after the half circulate? It's still a right hand. Yeah. They have a right hand wave or far. All right. Or, or just call swing and promenade from here then. Yeah, you can call swing and promenade. There's lots of options. Um, one of the things that happens a lot, especially with new callers, New callers, I know I did it when I started, I was so worried about impressing my mentor that I wanted to get all the wows in. And I wanted to get all you know, the big finish, the big gimmick, the big hoo-ah. Uh, I learned very quickly from Kim and from Bob that uh, they're more impressed by good solid calling, good flow and comfortable dancing for the dancers than they are with having a fancy little gimmick or a fancy little thing here. All the rest of that comes with time. Uh, you have some really, really good material there. On your isolated site, just be aware of your flow. You need to get those transitions in your flow. That's why yeah. I written through the perfect movement. I could tell you were nervous. I put you on the spot. That's not what you expected. That's what's going to happen. If you're calling, that's what you do in your practice. When you're calling, if, if you get a chance to say, go and visit Mike Sikorsky's club, and he says, would you like to do a tip? That's not the time to get up there and practice isolated sites unless you feel ready. Don't let somebody say, right, I want to get you to get up there and sight call. If, we, if you're not ready, don't, don't be ready. I know a lot of really, really good callers that never get past modular sequencing and very, very basic one couple sites. And they're phenomenal. And some of them are very, very popular, well-known callers. You do what makes you comfortable because when you're comfortable and you're confident, your confidence is going to feed the dancers and they're gonna be confident with you. Good job, some really nice stuff in there. Thank you. Good work. Thank you, everybody. Anybody else wanna have a go? Is that you, Linda? How about our birthday? Yeah. How about our birthday, go? It is your birthday, isn't it, Linda? No, not me. It was no, recently. It's Roz's. Oh, it's Roz's birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. Roz. Okay, Linda. Um, Almost. <laughs> okay, my focus move was wheel around, but nothing using only up to wheel around. So you've got a limited okay. amount of choreography to use. Limited amount of choreography. So okay. when you're uh, completing, please keep in mind that you've only got up to that point. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, get in for a corner box is heads pass through. Separate around one to a line. Star through. Centers pass through. All pass through and wheel around. Okay, so then you go to a module. I'm going to split two. What, what kind of module? Uh, so centers, centers in, you're going to do split two around one to a line. Pardon? Corner box to corner box? Uh, yeah. I, I'm only putting those in in reference so everybody can see what's happening here. Okay, so what is it? 
uh, split two around one to line, so you might have to do centers. Uh, oh. Okay. Bend the line. Star through. Wheel around. Okay, then I've got. Give me a corner box to a partner line. Did you have? Oh, one? I was gonna. I was gonna do a plucker. But does it matter? Okay. Um, oh no, because I didn't do a box to a line. But okay, yeah, right on. Um, v to the left. Couple circulate. Boys circulate. Chain down the line. Ladies chain. You're there already. Yeah, but I'll, no, of my, my conversion from box to line is including a wheel around. So okay, everything, no. all of my modules. No, fine. I I'm, just, I, I'm fine. Ladies chain, yeah. Uh, Star through, pass through, wheel around, veer to the left and then bend the line. Okay. Did you want to try some isolated site? No, no, because I've worked on, no, I've worked on my. No, that's fine. Now give modules. me a guess. Get me a ghetto. Okay, so I didn't do a wheel around one from here. So what is it? Touch a quarter. Circulate. Boys run. Okay. Then I did. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's all right. I had a plucker as well. Yeah, but that's all, all right. We just do that. Do that one. Yep. All, all we're doing is just taking some of your modules and putting them into yep. sequence. You don't want to look at them all strung together. But the idea is to take one or two and you put them together. Yep. You can put a chicken plucker in there. Add a corner box module, half chicken plucker to an Alaman left. You can make any kind of sequence or combinations you want. And realistically, that's about the length of the sequences that you want for the dancers. If you've got really, really good hype, well-to-do dancers, you can do a lot of that. Give them a right and left brand to home, like um, I believe, John, you did when you did the flip-flop on your sequence. You flip them over to the other side, and you called your Alaman left, and then promenade home. Excellent idea, excellent way of using that technique is changing the quadrant to the right-hand quadrant. I think, uh, Phil, you did the same thing with the flip flop on the eight chain six for your conversion. It just flips them over onto the other side. Okay, so this is wheel around. You did heads pass through, separate around one to a line, star through, centers pass through, everybody pass through and wheel around. Okay, there's the corner box. You don't have any real bad flow in there. You've got a good general flowing thing to pass through the hand contact, the wheel around. After a pass through, you get into a trade by formation. The fact that you've got the wheel around, if they know that wheel around is your focus, that's fine. That's another one where the dancers have the intuitive reaction that they want to do a forward action in the center because they're already moving forward through the center. Timed well, this is not a problem. If it's not timed well, they're already going to be too close in the center waiting for that next call. And they're going to be really, really tightly packed. And that's something that you really don't want to have happen too much. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. 
Okay. So we're Except gonna corner. I'd, I'd like you to put this in the chat so that I can use it if I may. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, should have, oh, sorry, just pasted it to CC, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Okay, Thank so you. the next section is a corner box to a corner box, which is split to separate around one. We're keeping the same kind of general theme with the separates, bend the line, star through, and wheel around. Okay, so a split two around one. There we are. We're comfortable. Bend the line. We've gone around one and we've done a bend the line. That's a run out and bend in. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Star through. Again, we're facing out in this trade by formation. This is another example of where the centers are going to want to go forward. You've got to make sure that they know. You may have to prompt them and take the partner's hand, wheel around. Uh, when you do this kind of thing. The problem I have with the star through and wheel around, okay, watch the star through, watch how the boy's body flow is going. So. You see that? The boy has to go right and then he backs up again. That's the same kind of thing that we do to the ladies all the time. Lady callers do this to men all the time. They're, they're watching the ladies' body flow because if we look at it for the ladies, star through and wheel around, it's pretty much a forward action for her. But if we look at it for the man, pass through, forward, right, stop, back up. That is a real, real harsh transition. Okay. If the dance, if, if this is, you're, you're very limited in your movements, so this is something, if you're going to be doing it, make it very specific that you're working a wheel around. Uh, you may want to try other things, get a forward flow, the pass through wheel around, the straight star through wheel around is not a great combination for men. Neither is slide through wheel around. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we're back in a corner box. We do veer left, couple circulate, boys circulate, chain down the line. Veer left, couple circulate, boys go twice, followed by a chain down the line. Okay, now there's more to that module. That right there is a beautiful little corner box department line conversion. Veer left, couple circulate, the boys go twice. Chain down the line. You can call that chain down the line while the boys are even moving because they'll move with the lady into that position and transition. That is a beautiful and clever little module in itself, Linda. Or, um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Linda. <laughs> Couldn't think of who I was dealing with that. Okay, now you're finishing your module with a ladies chain, star through, pass through, wheel around. Again, we're getting into this congestion issue in the middle. So ladies chain, not a problem. Star through, we're here, pass through, and their anticipation is forward. That's going to be a very, very crucial timing issue that you have to be aware of if you're going to pull that off. Veer left, not a big problem because it's the same flow as the right and left through. Bend the line, not a problem. Touch a quarter, all eight circulate, not a problem. And that's just a standard line to conversion, uh, to corner box conversion to an LMN left. Perfect little get up. You could have even, if you were worried about it, called circle left and gone into a circle movement to give them breathing time. Lots of things you can do. And with wheel around, you could have even done the circle left, Alaman left, promenade, everybody wheel around, wrong way, promenade home. Fits right in your theme. It fits right in with your resolution. You've got a lot of material to play with. Given the limitations that you put on yourself, I think you've done exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other comments? Yes, Yolanda. Um, can you put that wheel around, get out in the chat, please? Thank you. It's already in there. Yes. No, no, the, the one that you just said. Oh, that's just from a promenade. Promenade, everybody wheel around. And wrong way, promenade home. Okay, thank you. No worries. Uh, okay, Roz, did you want to have a go? 
Uh, yeah, I might as well. I actually didn't see the bit about the homework down the bottom, so I missed if, that. If, so if you're, not, if you're not ready and you're not prepared, don't worry about it. We can do it all sorts of different ways. Well, I'll have a go. I was trying to jot down a couple of things I use, so okay. we'll give that a go. Whether it works or not, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Heads promenade a half. Yeah. Pass the ocean. Oh, heads past the ocean. Sorry. Yep. Now, I was going, I could use step through to get to the corner box, but I'd rather extend. Is that okay or not? What's your next movement? Um, so swing through. Okay, so either one would work, but I would use an extend because it's an- I'd rather do extend, I think it's smoother. So extend. Swing through. Swing through. I've done it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too quick. Uh, spin the top. Yeah. Right and left through. Now, instead of doing square three, uh, three I want to slide through. Yeah. And then I'll do part of my chicken pucker, but I don't have to do the first bit because I'm already there. So I pass to the centre. Excellent eye seeing that. Very well done. All right, so. Did everybody else see what you've got there? Instead of calling um, swing through, spin the top, slide through to the corner box, she called swing through, spin the top, right and left through, slide through. And if you remember what I was saying about a right and left through, that can be moved around. The chicken plucker is right and left through, pass through, trade by. She's put the right and left through there to get her into part of the chicken plucker already done. Okay, so pass to the center. Um. Yep. Cent centers pass through. Now, the doing the site call, I was trying to scribble something, but I don't know if it works. And so I'll give it a go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, swing through. Yep. Um, yeah, recycle. Okay, you've got the girls leading on the recycle there. You're yeah. all half out shade, that's okay. Touch a quarter. Boys run around the girls. Reverse flutter wheel. And sweep a quarter, sorry. I should have said that before. You need that as one, don't you? And right and left through. Actually. Sure, I could have. That's all right. Um, um, I want comments on this bit, so I'll see how we go. Okay, um, eight, chain, eight chain four. Okay, you're doing a flip-flop now. That's just an interactive, does nothing, it just flips the square over. And you remember you're still in your half chicken plucker, so you got to get out of that eventually. Oh, sorry. I've stuffed up there. Okay, um, I'll just do a normal chicken plaque. Right and left through, pass through, trade by. I did something wrong. Okay, so that brings me back there. That might work. Okay, so eight chain four. 
No, it's still not going to work. Don't well, worry you, about what it. What are you trying to do? You're now in a corner. Element ball. left. No, that's all right. I might talk no, something. I, I, um, what were sorry. you trying to do? I was trying to get an eight chain four, but coming back to the corner box. You're, you've done it. You're in a corner but box. Coming back to the corner box, you can't do alley man left because you've got the wrong hand. That's correct. So I was going to do a turn through. Mm -hmm. And that would put the sides facing out. So I'd have to either have the sides face your partner, or could you do, as you're doing the turn through, look out for your partner, swing and promenade. So. Absolutely, you can. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the only one issue that you have coming out of an eight chain four, right hand, yes. left hand, right hand. Left hand. It's the wrong hand. You've got a courtesy turn on the outside. You want to follow that with a right and left brand or a turn through. It's not going to be comfortable. It doesn't matter how which you do it, whether you follow up an eight chain movement, because unless you're doing an odd number, it's going to end with a courtesy turn for at least two of the couples. You've got to watch okay. the outside as well as the centers. But what you did there, the half chicken plucker, put your eight chain four early, half chicken plucker. The turn through to a right and left grant, absolutely. Nothing wrong with it at all. Okay, so let's have let's have a look at your full sequence. Okay, so we started off with a get in to a corner box. Promenade half past the ocean, extend, swing through, spin the top. I'm oh, sorry, I, I missed one there. Let's stop that. Okay, promenade half past the ocean extend. That's how I get into a corner box. It's a corner box ocean wave. So we did that. There's our corner box ocean wave. Okay. The zero module is swing through, spin the top, slide through. But she knew she wanted to follow that with a half chicken plucker. The half chicken plucker she chose was right and left through past the center, centers pass through. All she did was move the right and left through up a bit to disguise that. Excellent choice. That's getting into a little bit more advanced technique, so not a problem at all. Swing through, spin the top, right and left through, slide through. That's the first part of our half chicken plucker done already. So we finished the chicken plucker, send her pass through. There it is. We're in a right hand lady box. And you went to isolated site. Swing through, mm -hmm. a recycle with the girls leading, always problematic. Touch one quarter, boys run, reverse flutter wheel, sweep a quarter more, right and left through. Does the job nicely. Any comments on that? Yeah. After yes, one, um, in in the zero module where he calls swing through spin the top right and left through at the beginning. Yeah. If you call spin the top swing through, you can just drop the right and left through. You have it fully integrated. Yep. Oh, okay. So the, this is just a, a thing that that you might consider for future purposes. But if you want a right and left through after such a call, you might not need it if you exchange the spin through and the, and the swing through. You know what you're saying there? Uh, if, you, if you had facing couples and you called spin the or swing through, spin the top, they'd expect, expect it. But from a past the ocean extend, you're already in the ocean wave. If you yes. transpose those two movements, spin the top followed by swing through, followed by the uh, slide through, you've already done what you need to achieve. Okay. That, that's a, a little bit higher level skill, but it's a very valid point. It's something to bear in mind. And then you wouldn't have to watch the timing on the um, right and left you have to spin the top to get well, that right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not even that. It's, it, you've already incorporated the right and left through in the half chicken plucker. You're just moving flow and it shortened it. The dancers. Okay. It'll also set up that half sachet to recycle saying, oh, something different's coming. And they've already succeeded working 
a little bit apositionally from normal. Okay. I, I, I stumbled up upon that by, by accident. I accidentally, uh, when I call a singing call, I accidentally exchanged those calls. And then I was in a mess and I had to think, what, what did I do? And then I figured out and found out that swing through and spin the top uh, reversed includes a right and left through. Yeah. Okay, now your isolated set, I'd like to look at a couple things in here. This is one of the things that we talk about lady callers. Okay, watch the flow for the number one lady. On well, the main up. <laughs> right hand, half. Static, forward and around, right hand half, slide, left hand flow. Absolutely no problem whatsoever for the ladies. Watch the men. Right hand half, left hand half. Right hand flow, right hand flow, right hand flow, and in. And that's three right hand flows. Anything more than Three quarters, or two and a half, I should say, is overflow. Five quarters, anything beyond that is overflow. You are dangerously close to overflow there. Okay. Okay. But you did it with a reverse flutter wheel and then a right and left through. Now we're into left hand flows for the lady. Okay, we did the boys run. Reverse flutter, watch the ladies here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Same thing. You are right on the cusp of overflow. You haven't yeah. quite hit it, but you're right on the cusp. The problem I have is your next movement, although forward, is again a left hand turn for the ladies. So you've got exactly. right and left hand turn for two of the ladies. Now those head ladies are into the overflow. They've now yeah. done seven quarters in a row. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then a right and left through is another left hand turn for the ladies. Half through, frayed by is another left hand turn for the side ladies. Turn through right and left friend. There's not very much wrong with it. It's just something to be aware of. If you've got something like that, that's where you want to put in one of those little filler modules. Like uh, when you get to that line, pass through, we want to be a double pass through, first left, next right, or first right, next left, a right and left through, just to break up. Break up that constant directional direction. Um, I, I'll take you back and I'm going to use John's example right at the beginning. He started off with a left hand flow. Then he went to a right hand flow with the Ferris wheel. Then he did another right hand flow with a couple circulate and a left hand flow with the Ferris wheel. Each one of those, they feel a little different, but the transition was nice going from one to the next, to the next, to the next, because it broke up the direction that flow for everybody. I I'd, like to say, I'd like to say I did that by design. But the way your modules work, the way it, when you piece them together, it's going to happen automatically because you built that into the modular system that you have. So you, if you follow those modules that you have and you use them in different combinations, you can't help but having good flow transition. Right. Is, is that everybody? Anybody else want to have a go? We're well, now, I, I have a question, Mel, I'd like you to answer before I go. I can try. All right, so if I start doing some sequences and tamination, and I get four or five in, let's say I worked in from a static square to a corner box, is there a way to paste? Can I go get a module from someplace else and then paste it in without having the thing to start over again? Uh, I wish there were, but no. What you need to do is you need to design your module. So for instance, if I'm going to write a corner box module, I go, um, okay, so I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, okay, what am I going to do? Oh, I want to use, uh, I don't know. Well, at this point, I want to, at this point, I want to go get a corner module and paste it in. Yeah, I know. Corner box, corner box. You can't do it. No, you can't paste on top of what you can do, though, is you have a Word document open simultaneously. Oh, yeah, well, sure. And then you just paste them in sequence as you go from start to finish. Oh, so like, OK. Well, for instance, that's and that's exactly what I did when I did these modules. 
seconds. Okay, that's what I was. That's what I was looking to do. I just want to know if if there was a way to do it without having to go to another piece of paper, make it a new assembly and just stick in there. I don't know if there is or is not. I don't know of one. All right, I'll have to send an email off to uh, to Tamination Central and ask what that feature can be done. So, and this this is what I do. I do them on a separate sheet of paper. I'll do them one module at a time. I'll do it. I get into a corner box. Great. I'll do that. I'll copy. I'll paste it on a Word document. And then I'll say, what do I want to do? Okay, I want to do some isolated site and put the two couples together. And then I just start doing isolated site. I get back there. I make a comment. Okay, I'm back in my corner box. I know there is some version much. So I'll type that in there. I'll copy it and I'll paste the whole sequence over. Eventually, what I do is I've got my comments all sequence. Here where it says undertaken, I can call isolated site, or I can resolve with a partner line module, or even call circle left. These are notes to myself while I'm creating these. Once I go back, I, all I know is I can see partner line to partner line module. There it is. And when I play it, All I'm doing is checking to make sure there's no nothing that jumps out at me as a radically bad piece of body flow. Everything is yeah. going. Yeah, I was just looking at the mechanics of getting this stuff entered into taminations. It would be nice yeah. if you could if you could work it through an nice. opening and then add a add a corner box and corner box module without having to go to another piece of paper and start again. The only way I can think of it is if I wanted to do that, I would go like this. Copy, paste. Okay, paste, control V, and then I would put my insert. Yeah, on. okay. It's well, a, can you? That process, you can add it on as you go, but you have to copy and paste what's there first. Can you, uh, can you, can, you can add a whole bunch in there, right? Yep. You okay. can keep going as long as you copy and paste what you have already first, and then open up, paste, and then add your module at the end of it. Oh, that'll work for me. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Happy birthday, Roz. <laughs> Thanks. All right. See you later. I got to go answer my tummy. All right. Well, it's Thanks, almost John. noon here. I, I've heard Helen outside with the chainsaw. She's already felled two trees and moved them, and she's probably done the lawn and lower back everything out there already because it's going to be gone. So she's done all the housework and homework for me. Uh, now she's in the shower, the housework's done, so I guess that's my cue to say I'm to need to ask if there's anybody else that wants to look at anything. I put mine in the chat. Oh, did you? I didn't see it. Did you want to have a quick go at it? I just, that's, uh, that's mostly, that's higher than I normally do, so. Okay, well, let's just have a look at it. So I'm not really sure how good it works. I think it's okay, but. Have a look. I only work with about first 21, 22 calls. Okay, I need to pull up the chat wherever that is. What do we got? Oh. Right, a couple things here. Okay. So we've got five half sachet followed by a heads lead right swing through. So five half sachet, no. Swing to the right followed by a swing through and the boys run. Okay, we've got a partner line. Excellent, we'll get into a partner line. Okay, star through, pass through, centers wheel around. So we get star through, pass through. Now, this is where your timing will really have to be into sync with your dancers because that wheel around for the centers is going to be very tight because they're going to start moving. So the girls are going to want to be moving forward and they're going to have to really squeeze together. So on that one, what, what you would call would be after the boys run, star through, pass through, and centers, so they know it's coming, wheel around rather than going for it. You've got to get that in quickly. You've got to force that three bars of phrasing into that one beat of music 
so the dancers can see and succeed at it. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really tight. Okay. Wheel around. Just out of curiosity, Mark, do you dance with wheelchair dancers? No, no wheelchairs. Okay, just curious. Okay, wheel around. Centers um, pass through, yep. Yeah. Okay, the next move was a clover leaf. Okay, followed by a centers pass through, followed by everybody star through, and we're back in the partner line. And then the partner line get out module. Star through, pass through, California twirl. Oh, what did you see there, Mark? Okay, I'm watching. Look at look at where the center dancers are for California twirl. And remember, they're moving forward as a couple. California twirl. Yep. Okay. That's another instance where the dancers really have to squeeze together. Well, most most dancers will dance a star through instead of a California twirl. Yep, or they'll do a, a pass through in the middle. Exactly. Well, like I said, I'm I'm used to handy capables, and their squares are about a mile wide. Yep. So I'm not used to normal squares. And one of the things it was said to me by somebody that calls her uh, group is they found it a lot better when they actually called to the dancers as dancers. There's slight modifications that needed to be made with what you want to do and what you want to achieve in timing and everything else but they found it more effective once they have it they have it they're not going to let go of it and when they dance they start dancing when their squares tightens up they're some of the best dancers out there for what they know because it's fixed how to do it properly you can call a pastor wheel around with them and they would never hesitate on it call a pastor trade by and they would never hesitate on it most other dancers are going to go with this is the way the flow goes this is what i'm used to or this is my expectation of what's going to come next and they would have more problems with it um, the pastor wheel arounds like that from boxes those are very common with wheelchair dancers because as you said the squares are very very wide and broad and wheel around is one of those movements that is so easy to transition into wheelchair dancing normally for I couldn't make it do it in uh, Tam Nations, but normally from my partner line get out with my handy capables is just face your partner right and left grand. Yep. That's my normal one. But when I, when I am teaching the star through to new students, I use that one. See where I say face in? That's what you're probably typing. Just go. Yeah, I, I couldn't make it do it. All quarter in. Oh, okay. So that's what what level is quarter in? That's an advanced movement, but that's basically quarter in from that position means face your partner. Okay. Advanced and challenged, you, you probably find that there's a lot of movements like that that have really, really fancy names. And all they've done is just taken a basic principle and given it the fancy name. But I didn't say that out loud. I'm lucky if I remember all the plus call names, <laughs> let alone the advanced. I don't even know any of them except pair off. <laughs> right. Anybody else have any comments? Well, um, you use, uh, or, or Mark, you use the clover leaf, which is into mainstream, whereas all the other calls, so they were early yeah. based. So I, is there an equivalent uh, that you can sort of use instead of clover leaf? Yep. Yeah, but I was trying, this was my quick homework that I threw together for this. And if you are using basic and you get into that position, so you're in a completed double pass route. You can say, leader, separate, and when you meet, step in as a couple. Trailers, separate. When you meet behind them, step in as a couple. All you're giving is the cloverleaf direction manually. Uh, most, of, most of my class, the tips are head square. I mean, they know head square through. They got that one down pretty good. Uh, and 
or I'll do head start through and California twirl. <coughs> and then it's usually some kind of variation of the chicken plucker, Alaman left and you're back home. Or if I've been doing star throughs and California twirls in there and and boxing that and I end up not going to a corner box and I end up getting myself in partner lines, I'll do those part those one of those two partner line get outs. But my tips are very, very short for them. Yeah. I'd like to point out Goog posted a, a number of different get ins and get outs. Uh, in the chat so before because i'm going to be having to leave here very shortly if you want to get a copy of those please copy them just select them and copy them and paste them on a word document before i close because uh once i close they're going to disappear mark as always i want to say thank you for recording this and posting this i will be posting uh, everything that was up there congratulations to everybody that found i hope you found these little exercises useful um i hope to do a little bit more um where I don't have to do the prelim presentation beforehand. It'll just be an exercise with constructive critique and criticism for uh, primarily the new callers, but also it's the aid in those that mentor. I believe, John, you're helping um, Phil. Is that correct? John? John Casey? Uh, I'm helping Ross. Uh, helping Ross. Yeah, same, same kind of thing. So will help if you're if you're actually mentoring another caller to show them which way you want to go with these things and, and, and how you want to really improve that critiquing schedule. But with that, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. I hope you have it all pasted. And uh, I bid you a happy Sunday. I hope you all have a great weekend in the States next weekend for Thanksgiving. And hopefully we'll see you back here next Saturday or next Sunday or Saturday, wherever you may be. Have a good night. Good night. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.